procedures. I think everybody in the room knows what they are, so I won't waste time on that. Can I tell you that the filming or recording of the meeting, which in line with the openness of local government bodies regulations 2014, may well be filmed or recorded by the town council, by other members of the council, or by members of the public. Uh, we now move to the agenda proper, if I may put it that way, and the first thing is submissions from the public. Have we any, Sharon? I haven't. I don't know whether any of the public who are in attendance. I know the Scouts representatives are here to, in respect of a specific item. Right. And Paul is also here in respect of a specific item. Right. So it's just whether the other member of the public has anything. Is that Sarah? I wanted to know how we're getting on without stone cough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get some. Thinking remembrance, but I'm, I'm sure that's going to come up. Right, okay. Uh, applications for dispensation by councillors. No. Item 3, which I've dumped to ahead of item 2, which is apologies for absence. Uh, I have apologies from Keith, and Tony will hopefully join the meeting at some stage because he's in a car that broke down the motorway. All right, thank you very much. Um, declarations under the Local Government Act of 1972. Does anybody have any? Mm, I've oh. sent mine via email to... Yes, you have, yes. Uh, Franklin sent some through today, so uh, I think we'll get that up. Congratulate you, Franklin, on your appointment at the Cabinet of South Gloucestershire. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. He's VIP now. VIP? Yeah. Wasn't he before? Um, <laughs> Right, um, I have no announcements. I don't know if Sharon knows of anything that the uh, no. Chairman was planning to say that uh, I can't. No. Okay. Right, can we move on to item 6 then to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting? Um, go through it, please. What is He's proposing. What is proposed? Seconder, please. I second. Yeah. Sorry, who was that? Franklin. Oh, Franklin, right. Thank you very much, Franklin. Right, that's that one out of the way. Can we take a vote, please, Councillor? Terry's got a thumb up. Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, that's unanimous, thank you. Right. Could you please initial every page and then sign the date the last page, please? Thank you very much. Sharon's only doing this because she hopes if I ever become famous, she can sell my autograph. <laughs> waiting to join us there because John Ash earlier on said he was a yeah, yeah. yeah I've um, I've texted him just in case he's uh, running late. Last time I saw anything this long it had war and peace down the spine. <laughs> from the strategic planning meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right, it was on the back of the agenda, the back of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Right, 721 Bailey's Court Activity Centre. No, no, 7.1. 7.1, sorry. I've given you that already. <laughs> right. Um, has anyone got any comments on the uh, strategic planning meeting, which I've just initialed and signed off because I thought it was an annex to the main minutes? Yeah, I'm good with that. No, it's the, that, that's the, yeah, so it's the next stage state park development. 7.1. There isn't anything in there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. Great. Roger. Graham, I wonder if you could explain what equipping the interior of the containers consists of. What sort of equipment? Did you ask that? Well, when we had the uh, initial field, it's, uh, we already had uh, insulation, we had flooring, we had lighting, we had heating. Uh, there's a ceiling key. Unit, um, etc. So what we're doing now is dividing it into three distinct spaces. One will be like a kitchen, so it's a little kitchen area. Uh, one is like a project living area, so we can, can we can do um, bike maintenance, scooter maintenance, our projects, and the other one is a get out recreational area. So that's basically the, the three. Sorry, what could you say? So there was the the, the kitchen, that kitchen area, yes, yeah. and so then what was the second know, one? Various curriculum stuff related to healthy eating, food yeah. prep, and making smoothies, and, and then a workroom, uh, a project area. Project so area. that's for uh, bike maintenance, yeah. and scooter maintenance, yeah. and art projects, and then uh, chill out, and right. sort of chill out area. Lovely. So basically, it's one big space at the moment. And, that, and that's going to cost £10,000. Well, we're, we need to get detailed quotes on that, yeah. That's, that's the maximum budget. That's, that's the maximum budget. Okay. Mm. Anyone on Zoom got any queries on that? I don't see any hands going up. I'll take that as no. I don't see any hands going up. Sharon, would it help the people, of, members of the public who have come if we dealt with the items they are particularly interested in now, bring them up the agenda, because I expect many of them probably won't want to sit for a half or hour or more. I think, uh, yeah, you could, you could do the 
although I, I was going to suggest 7.5, which is the installation of the permanent pickleball court, yep. is actually combined in with 8.1, because 8.1 does have the um, right. some quotes a part of the pickleball line markings part of that. So yeah. it makes is anybody sense. actually talking on that? Um, Paul is here in respect of that. Yes, Paul Copley. So right. Paul, do you want to? Uh... I was referred to just the Quidditch club, I'm sorry about that. Uh, anything you want to tell us? The thing that we're particularly keen to be able to play pickleball uh, on what are currently the tennis courts, it wouldn't stop them being used for tennis, but um, especially with the restrictions of playing indoors, it would be particularly helpful. And it's a facility, although Pickleball can be played by people of any age. At the moment in Bradley Stoke, it's particularly being used by sort of elderly citizens, sort of 55 plus is the majority. Um, so we would be really keen if it was possible to have the line marking done. At the moment, we're using one court that we've managed to tape ourselves, but the tape isn't going to withstand the element, so it's already pulling off. So we were looking to see if we could have that permanently done on the courts. There's no actual recommendation on the papers we've been uh, given. We do have a quote. Uh, are we happy to accept that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Can, I would, it would be better if you combine it with 8.1 right, when you sorry. get to that on. one. Because that um, has quotes within the... Uh, Oh, that one there. Mm -hmm. So it right. would make more sense to consider it as part of that, which right. is so within the We have been bring forward 732, because I think quite most of this. Yes. Okay, we'll do that when we finish this one. Okay. Yeah. So we've got a number of quotes here uh, you on 8.1. Yeah, do you want to uh, there is, it's her own. Um, so. Wake up in the background, Dale. I'm trying to find the paperwork. Um, yeah, no, no problem. Yes, this is something that was um, visited, um, it's revisiting a decision because I actually didn't have all the information at hand at our finance meeting. Um, and a decision was made, but it, all the information wasn't actually there for you to make that decision on, on the accurate data. Um, so the report on 8.1, I won't read through it, I'm sure you've all read through it, has the accurate quotations of three companies um, from Rachel side, she's um, included the budget, uh, there's a Jubilee Centre hard court repainting resurfacing budget reserve. Uh, there was also a comment that was made about um, netball not being able to be played on the Mooga area, but one of these quotations uh, I'm just trying to find it. Sorry, I'm dipping through it here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, One at the top of the second page. Uh, yeah, um, I've also had confirmation that you can play netball on a MUGA if it has the correct surface. The correct surface is included in the quotation from soft surface, sports and play surface. It's the Macadam sport surface, and this was checked with uh, England netball. Right. And the, the, I think the GP, GB Sport and Leisure, that's also um, a Macadam surface, isn't okay. it? Macadam. Macadam, yeah. <laughs> Named after a famous Scotsman. Yeah. There are one or two, apart from Robbie Burns. Well, that John is now. John Ash is. Sorry. John Ash is just there. Uh, he's just joining us. Welcome, John. Hello, John. I don't think he's actually clicked in yet. Okay. Right. Yes, he has. Oh, he's connecting at the moment. Yeah. Evening, John. Evening, John. Evening, sorry, mate. That's all right. Nice to see you as always. Um, we're dealing with um, 8.1 and um, 7.1, no, and 7.1.1 together. No, no. 7.5. Sorry, 7.5. Too many numbers around here. It's like a bingo calling session. Um, 
So, um, Del, are you recommending any one of these in particular? Well, I think you'd be minded to go with the two Macadam services that suggest that you can actually play netball on them. Um, Makes and, sense. Yeah, because obviously the netball hire is going weekly. I have worked with GB Sports and Leisure and Sports School as well services, and both are very reputable companies. Um, and also soft services, sport and play services. But I'm just trying to read the yeah, no. There's no mention in the soft surface thing about netball. Talks about tennis and pickleball. Yeah, that should be included in no, there. It does, talk, does refer to the porous McAdam surface. Yeah, no, it does, but it hasn't got the netball. Okay. So, so, are you minded to suggest any one opposed to either of the other two? Um, I, I personally would be happy with either or. Um, I couldn't favour one over the other. Uh, but obviously, the inclusion, they were all asked for specifics on the, the specification, i.e. to include the costing for tennis marking, pickleball marking, and also for netball marking. Um, GP um, Sport and Leisure is over a thousand pounds cheaper than, um, than the next one. Is that good value for money? In the past I've used them, they are extremely good for uh, remedial and repair work and play, play areas. They have they tend to do that more so than the redevelopment of whole play areas. Um, that, that's the sort of uh, focus for that business. Um, well, shall I move that we accept GB Sport and Leisure's uh, offer? Is that the key? Sorry, is it the wrong set? No, 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 because it says McCadden surface. The mover is always intended. Yeah, the mover was, was looking forward when we looked at the. Red head coming somewhere, Yeah, well, it was just getting clarification with regard to a mover surface. This, this, this isn't actually relevant to that, so no, it is. That would, the, yeah, it would be fine. The right. GB Sport and Leisure quote. If I move GB Sport and Leisure, can I have that seconded, or does anyone want to make another proposal? That's fine. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Who seconded? Sorry. Ed. Ed. Oh. I was uh, worried about that new bought po poem, about there being a deathly hash in the close that night. I'm not going to do that. Uh, all right, we now move on. Sorry, no, can you just take a vote on that? Oh, please? sorry. Rachel, Rachel, you've got your hand up. Yeah, within that vote, can we just um, have it from the budget as well? Um, and the budget information is at the end of the report. Yeah. Uh, with the budget reserve, specifically for the uh, Jubilee Centre card books, we've got eight and a half thousand. Uh, but also, um, so we could take that um, and then the balance from the uh, Jubilee Centre ground maintenance budget, 6046. That's just over four hundred pounds extra. We can afford that, can we? Yeah. <laughs> just checking. Right, with uh, Rachel's comments on that, can I put that to the vote then? There's the paper. Everybody in the room. Uh, oh, I can see. Yeah. John, I can see. Everyone. Right. Thank you very much, councillors. Thank you. So that means then you obviously you don't need to reconsider that the installation of the permanent pickleball marking because that's included within the costings of this. Right. Paul, happy with that? Yeah. So, excuse me. The, 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 what we were asking for was the marking on the two existing hard tennis courts. Yes, that's what the, the quote is. That So the, the company that they've gone with, GB Sport and Leisure, is lines to two pickleball courts. So yeah. Yeah. The last actual thing on that uh, part of the report. Yeah. 
that are so when, when they resurface and then remark, they will put pickleball courts onto two of the tennis courts. All right. That's great. Having used to play badminton, and a hall that had markings for about four different sports mm, on it. Yeah. It can be quite interesting. All right, does that take us on to 721? I think the suggestion was... 711. No, the suggestion was to go to 7.32 now yeah. because there are two representatives from right. the Scouts Association. That's fine. Can I say something? Yes, please do. Uh, Roger. Related to the Scouts storage problem, I've raised this in every meeting with the public editors, but we don't seem to be any further forward on this. Uh, so over six months ago, the South Carolina should have taken their decision, but we're running out of time, so we need to take positive action. Now, Tony did a very rough calculation based on the uh, area and the cost of Delta market, and he came up with a a broad brush figure of about 80k maximum. Okay. Now, I, I would suggest we could use code 3089, which is future budget reserve. It says the current future budgets have the full plan. Now, the budget is now 2021, but it's 285k. And for 21 22, 166k. This would be more than adequate. Um, uh, I'd like to propose that we agree a budget, a maximum budget, of 80k for this uh, uh, sketch storage uh, problem. And uh, as we agree with The figures on the papers talk about 96k, even for the smallest one. Right. Which I assume is perhaps slightly more reliable than something that uh, the chairman has done on the back of a cigarette packet. What are you looking at? Uh, the report, 7.3.2, Roger? Yeah, yes, I know that. Yeah. What code are you looking at? Uh, yeah. 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 But um, we historically, 
way, you know, at the same time, we do tend to have um, a year-end surplus a lot higher than our predictions uh, because we are so strict with the budget. So, um, we were talking with Clive earlier, um, sort of Sharon and I and, and Dale, actually, and, and we did say that um, possibly a, a decision um, for spending big amounts of money uh, might need to be sort of held back a bit until we know what our finances are at the end of the year, but it's a council decision. Would it be financially prudent to allocate it for this purpose? It's not my decision. No, with your advice. Financially, no. I think Anne just got his hand up there. Sorry, one or two hands up. I gave had as well. And Tom did. Tom, do you want to come in first? I'm here for the only one. Were we not originally looking at funding this from a works loan rather than taking it from our reserves? Well, that would be the alternative. Uh, we said we don't feel we've been funded from 285,000 reserve. I, I kind of think that with all the uncertainties that are around us at the moment and, and what's going to happen next year, to take this amount of money from our reserve is, is probably not a good idea, whereas we could fund it using a works loan. The other works loan ends very shortly, so we're not going to be overly committed to anything. Right. Is the general feeling then that we should go with the works loan? In order, so part of the, so obviously part of the uh, a public works loan, which just which is referred to yes, there, is part of the public right. consultation. So you have to get, you have to demonstrate that this that this is something which the community of Bradley Stoke would obviously want us like a backup to apply for loan, and we have done consultations in the past. So, yeah, but it's yeah. taken for ages, and we haven't been inside of it. I mean, South Gloucestershire made their decision that they can't have their uh, container for more than a year. And we're already six months into that. So they're going to be faced with no storage at the end of this year, aren't they? So, you know, we can sit here and prevaricate until the cows come home, but, you know, let's, uh, let's do, actually do something for once. Well, uh, Rachel. But I'm just going to say, I mean, if, if that's the feeling with, uh, within council, and you know, I keep reiterating it is a council decision, if, if the expenditure is, is approved, then if it is backed up by the, on the understanding that it would be funded at some time in the future from a public works loan, that, you know, that's a more sensible sort of financial plan. But then again, it's down to a public consultation. Uh, ben, do you want to go in? Uh, I was just going to, when we started mentioning public work and flame, to mention the condition of the charity and stuff like that, so mm. that's fine. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. Does anybody want to come in? I haven't called. Yeah, um, yeah, come on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I understand that it was a previous year, or job commission, I was also for the Oh, at least for audio. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're very close, Tom. Yeah. Is that already clear? That's better. That's better. Right. If you talk closer to the microphone, I think that would be better. Okay, I'll make that comment. Okay, I was also part of South, but at the moment of time, I don't know whether it would be accurate to spend that much money on a project um, at this stage, okay, for, for storage. But because it's a public money, well, even if it's a loan, we need to at least pay back from the public money. It's a public money we are actually handling. Um, so we need to be very prudent and very very careful about it. So I can understand the situation. But it was a small amount of money. It's not a big space. But it's, when you look into it, one is 96k, and the other one I could see is 120k. So whether we need to spend that much money at this stage in the pandemic situation is an important thing. So what are you uh, saying? I'm, I'm really positive my submission. Okay. So, what, so what are you saying then, Tom? You shouldn't do it. Is that what you're saying? At this moment in time, I don't know whether it will be accurate to this and that much money. Uh, oh, because when you can actually, no, well, I can understand the logic. It, it seems to me there are possibly two questions to be asked. One in principle, do we do it? 
of bearing in mind the question that Roger's raised about South Gloucestershire having a time limit on the money, whether we work towards a public um, works loan. Uh, that's a consultation. That's you know, a yeah. consultation. Oh, sorry, is oh, his hand up there? Sorry, John or Tom? John. John's got his hand up. Hello, hello, team. I um, I don't really understand where we are on the all these phases because it seems to me that while we've got some estimated figures. We haven't actually done anything, have we? Uh, I think that was that right. point. I mean, if we if I, phase uh, phase one designing survey drawings, invitation to take a detailed measured survey. Is that not hasn't been done, has it? Well, right, okay. well, from, from my perspective, this project has not been agreed. There's been no budget set for this within this year. So from my perspective, I've been asked to go away and get some sort of full part figure on storage facilities that are more permanent. And the only one with lockdown I have managed to get some sort of full part figure from was, as in the third chapter, uh, third paragraph, um, you should be looking at, for, for example's sake, I've been up to Brookway and I've measured an area that I think would be suitable if you were to have permanent storage. So I'm doing a lot of presuming from that up and the figure that this architect has put forward which is 1200 to 1500 pounds square meter the figure is there for phase one phase two phase three we have not got to the stage of design where we would come up with a block plan to show you and say would you agree to for example say option one two three there's no budget there at the moment so i'm just coming back to you with what i can work with which is a ballpark figure Okay. Well, can I, do, I, I think Roger here has got a point that we've talked a lot about this and, and nothing has really happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how can we get this going? Because consultation, I mean, we'll have about six people reply, you know, it'll take two months. But can we, can we get this going? What is the next stage? Should we get the design done? Or, or what is it? Well, I, I mean, know. shouldn't, sorry to interrupt you, John, but shouldn't the uh, very, very first stage B, deciding whether we actually want to support going yeah. ahead with providing permanent storage for the scouts. I, I think we're absolutely right, Terry. I think that's the first thing we should actually agree or disagree on. I'd like to put that to the vote on the principle. So, Ben? And Rachel, where's what just getting going on that? Are there alternative budgets that money could be taken from this project? So instead of just going into one budget, is the option there to kind of look across the entire set of budgets or portfolio budgets to... Yeah, the, only, the, only one, the only one that immediately springs to mind is the on-site refurbishment budget, where we've got 105,000 in there. I mean, this is a long-term one. Um, at the early stages, we weren't going to touch it because... Um, Scouts. Okay. John, put your hand up. No. No? Right, who's there from the Scouts? 
So you've got Clive and Nick from the Scouts. Right. Would either Clive or Nick from the Scouts like to go into the stage? I can see Clive. I'm not sure I can see Nick. Yeah, exactly. He's next to Clive. Oh, yes. I'm not him, yes. Oh, yes. It's Scouts in big letters. Yes. <laughs> Uh, evening everybody, uh, just a quick word, um, just to clarify, I'm the Bruno Scout District Commissioner, so I have a wider responsibility for scouting in the area, which covers 21 groups, so it's a lot more than just the first part of each scout group. Having said that, um, the group scout leader, which was me, up until April 2019, still hasn't been replaced, so I search, I do honestly remain in position as group scout leader and support them accordingly. I don't tend to get involved in the week in day-to-day uh, stuff due to COVID at the moment, um, but I do support Nick, who is the group chair. So that is why Nick is here for Longley to speak as well. I will just, um, I would like to think that most people um, in the meeting do understand what Scouts are all about and the good work it's discussed. I have no reservations in the Bangalore Trumpet, um, with the largest youth organisation in the world and in Europe. Um, in the UK, half a million members, 157,000 other volunteers, um, and all volunteers are hasten to it. Locally, uh, First Bradley Stoke is scouting to around 250 young people, uh, supported by about 60 other volunteers. And bear this in mind, there's still 130 young people on the waiting list in these current times, even with um, COVID uh, couple causing sort of problems with us. Um, like everybody else, we face changing times, and temporarily we are going to lose both young people and adults. But rest assured, the demand will bounce back. We will need to continue to develop. Um, and it's just a blip at the time. We're now 12 years of, of, of growth as a movement, let alone locally. Um, in September, along with certain other youth organisations, uh, by the government down to the National Youth Agency, we were became classed as an essential youth service, and therefore we come to the same brackets in terms of essential need and funding accordingly in the local community. Um, with regards to the on-site storage, all we can really do is reinforce the need for it. We obviously can't make the decisions for you in terms of funding, that is down to you. What I will say is we absolutely um, welcome and appreciate the opportunity to do this, and we're not looking to get to office in the mouth. Um, what I would say is, that, you know, and clearly sitting here now is, is the first step, that we do want to be involved in the, the uh, should we say, the design brief stage. My background, I'm an architectural technologist, so I do understand, as Della's put in her report, the reader plan of work, which is what she's talking about. Um, but we're not quite there yet. What I will say is the, the square meters figures are about right. What I would say is if the building envelope, just the bare shell, was provided, leave you and me, we would support you, if not actually drive it in some of the local lobbying and perhaps fit it out. So the cost and some of the decoration, maybe services, things like that, and perhaps do after the things we need to be able to get to that stage. Um, if this doesn't happen, um, some of you might be familiar with the planning process we have to go through again. Bear in mind, we, we triggered that. We, it wasn't enforced, but we do recognise it was a temporary position for that container, and it was triggered. Um, so not triggered. We, the container is falling apart, and you know, the equipment inside it is getting damaged. And this is equipment that is dealt with and needed on a week-in, week-in-out basis. It's absolutely essential. And crucially, if that's not there, that then means volunteers have to go to some alternative storage we have down Trench Lane, and that adds time, probably half an hour on a volunteer's time. And it is hard work enough to get the volunteers to do one hour a week, let alone have another half an hour to do that, even if they're willing to do so. If the storage isn't there, it will kill, the, the, certainly volunteer recruitment, it will restrict the program we deliver, and ultimately it will be detrimental to the degree program, which is what we're all about. So I hope that gives some reinforcements to what we're really talking about. Um, I, I already have some visual suggestions, which as and when it's required, we can throw into the mix and, and have further meetings you know, with LMT, whoever it might be. Um, as I said, we're not going to get close to the mouth, but we would like to be involved so we make sure that if something does go ahead, it's fit for purpose, it helps serve us, and crucially, it helps serve Bradley State Radio, and it helps serve yourselves in terms of mental storage on site. So I've zipped through that. Nick, if you'd like to add anything to that, feel free now. Thank you. Nick? Uh, the, the only, so I, I endorse all of that. Uh, I'm spending time, despite the fact that we're closed and we are not meeting uh, face-to-face at the moment, uh, going into the container with a variety of um, uh, volunteers on a rotational basis to empty buckets that are filling up as we speak. Um, the, the container is damp. Um, uh, so we can't store anything uh, that's sensitive. Uh, the other thing to point out and, and, and just to reflect on, 
One of the reasons that we were refused planning permission was it was considered unsightly um, from the, the curbside, uh, uh, sorry, from the pathway. Uh, when our container is removed, there are then two containers that we are hiding. And, and I do wonder then, and, and I, it just the, the irony might be that then it, it might play havoc with the two that are already there. So thinking a little long term, you might find yourself, even if this particular course of action is followed, uh, that you might have to return to it at a later date. I think, um, we, I think we need to take this uh, step by step. There's been quite a wide ranging discussion. I think the first decision we need to take is the one in principle about whether we wish work to go ahead. And perhaps I can ask for votes on that one. Um, someone like to propose that we go ahead? So it was the oh, principle of providing a shared storage space for BSTC and the staff, because yes. obviously we would have storage yes. capacity in there yes. as well. So Red has proposed. Uh, just a uh, Andy second? No, no, just a quick question I want to ask. Oh, Surely we should, before we decide whether we're going to proceed, we should decide how we're going to fund it so that we know if we're voting for a project whether it's going to be funded from our budget or funded from the uh, work zone. And that's a bit like chicken and egg, isn't it, really? Yeah. Because yeah. We have, we have to decide yeah. this, yeah. This, yeah. This, yeah. Both, the principle of it, wasn't it? Yeah. This is the principle. Rachel? Uh, all I can say is if that's a, a sticky block, then um, I think any suggestion, rather than using the, the forward budget, but using the um, site refurbishment reserve, uh, would be a really good idea. That will give, so that that will not delay if, if council wants to proceed with, with this project. Um, we can, so we can cover the cost of, of the project, um, and we'll within that period we also know what our year top of year end reserve is. We might even be able to sort of cover half the bill. You know, we don't know because we're so um and if not we could look at um a um a public work loan at that point. Hey John? John? Yeah, I think we need to John. You're muted, John. Uh, okay, I've got it sus now. Well, can I just say I'll second the motion. And I think we need to move along. And even if nothing happens in the end, at least we're starting the process. Otherwise, we just sit here and chat for months and months and do nothing. Absolutely. So can I put that to the vote then? Uh, Roger's proposed and John has seconded. Terry is in favour, I see. Uh, so this is the principle of the providing principle shared of providing. storage space yes. for the scouts and the council. Franklin's got his hand up, and so has Fab. Three, Eddie's four, and five, Ben six, behind me. Seven, I think. So that's right. seven in favour. Those against, I see one of your hands haven't gone up. And abstentions. Andy. And Tom, so and like one against. Anyone against? Sorry, was there against? No. Right, sorry, so that's seven in favour. Let me just, can I just count? So I just want to make sure I've got the numbers right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it was seven in favour, and how many abstentions? Two. So there must be someone who hasn't voted. Sorry, can we get that start again? Am I right on the numbers, people? Let me just, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it's ten altogether. Yes, okay, so... So are you right or not? No, I'm not. Right. I, can we just nine. note that again, because we haven't got the numbers right here. Those in favour? One, two, three, yes. Three in the room. Four, Franklin five, four, John five, seven, five, so six. eight in favour. Oh, right. Yeah, so eight in favour, and then that was two abstentions. Is that Tom? And Can you Andy. indicate your abstentions again? Yeah. yeah. Tom and Andy. Andy. That's it. Thank you very much. Sorry about right. that. Just that's right. Just get it. Just get it right. Yeah. Right, okay. so that's the agreement in principle. Now, the next thing I think we've got to do is what we actually do next. Do we go along with Rachel's suggestion? Uh, do we take it from Rachel, would you like to repeat your suggestion? Um, that we initially take, um, 
a couple of views which I think are hot uh, from the um, from the uh, site refurbishment budget um, by the time that we actually physically need to sort of uh, spend the, the bulk load of the, the money uh, we'll know our year end reserves at that point um, and that will determine whether we can cover it or whether we need to go for a public works loan, but whichever way, but um, that reserve will cover the total bill. Now, That's moving to hand in hand in the sort of same speed, or we can move on to phase one and design and survey drawings, or Dell, perhaps you can guide us, or whether we should wait on that one? I think initially we have to liaise, obviously, we do need to liaise with the hire as well, because obviously this is a facility that they've been using for a long time, just from experience. Um, I've found that discussing what their needs are, what they have at the moment and what we need to do like for like, and then doing a basic block plan, I mean it is just additional storage, so it would be an addition to what you have at the back. Um, it would also be something that the town council will benefit from, um, but obviously um, I will be guided by architects. At the moment, until the budget's set, there's not really much I can bring back to the table at this point. Should you at least talk to the uh, people who would like you to use it and come back to us the next meeting on that point? Yeah, I think that's really yeah. important because that instills confidence within the, the users of the group. I don't want them to think that they're being left out and think that we're doing without them, you know, knowing what else. Ben? I was going to say, so, so if you can just fully explain the budget for us, as mm -hmm. you suggested from that. Oh. Yeah. We could hope we could hope suggest the digital budget and use that from the all sites of the budget and then move to, I don't know, round about April for council after the year end, reassess how we continue funding this. Current officers please. Rachel's nodding. I think Del nodded as well. I don't know she's falling asleep. <laughs> I, I didn't get, to be honest, I didn't get most of what we said then, but I got the gist. So uh, we, we're using the reserve. Uh, it won't be the first time that uh, um, we've done this. So we're using that reserve until we know what our year-end figures are, and then a firm spending action plan will be put in place at that point. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wasn't going to say the reserve. The all sites refurbishment budget. Yeah, yeah. Should we yeah. Have yeah. Have to reserve that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I would. Yeah. Absolutely. I was that. Can you just? Sorry, before we just do that. What what nominal code was that one, Rachel? I knew you were going to ask that. Oh, three A one two. Three O one two. Thank you. At the moment, we've got 105 in there, and I think it's going up to 110. Yeah. And if, if council approves the card. Terry, your light came on. Was that an accident, or do you want to come in? No, it's just I've got a message on my phone, and just kind of noise. Um, right. Okay, so that's it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I just make a suggestion? Yeah, probably. Yes, please do. Um, Picking up on what Dale said, if we can work together as just one of the users and come up with um, needs and wants, um, I can draft some thoughts which you can then say to whoever, whichever architect you want to commission um, to get it to the process, and just take it up to the design feasibility stage, and that, that would be very helpful, guys. And that way, your expenditure is going to be probably between seven and a half to ten thousand, including a cost feasibility study by quantity surveyor, and then you'll have something to work with. And take it the next stage. That's an excellent suggestion. If I can ask you to liaise with Dell on that one, I'd be very grateful. Okay. So you had a proposal from Ben and then a seconder from Roger? Yeah. 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 So we take uh, 100,000 from the. Uh, so that, so the, well, that's what, what it's 105 in there, isn't there? So, yeah, so, so we we'll just use, say 100,000. 100, yeah. Budget. Yeah. Budget. Yeah. 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 You know, so kind of refine requirements and things yeah. like that. Instead of but it might come in cheaper. It know, might come in cheaper. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Yeah. Here's a big smile from Rachel. I don't think I've ever seen a finance officer so happy to give it away. But yeah. <laughs> uh, those yeah. in favour, then, please. Uh, Fab. That's John. Two, Franklin. Three, four. Uh, 
where is five, six, seven. Um, uh, there's against. You get Sandy or abstaining. Against. Against. One against. And abstentions. Ed. Ed, are you in favour, against, or abstaining? In favour. Well, that's eight in favour, one against, one abstention. Thank and you very much. That is having that proposal about re-evaluating. So the small sites refurbishment budget yeah. uh, up to 100 by 100,000 and then by the, time, by the time the year and figures are available we'll have a better idea of the finance. Yeah, so we can make a decision if you want to make a public work space. decision. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, can I just say that it's, those figures probably won't be available in April because we have to do a year end assessment. It tends to be mid May. Yeah. Well, well, at least we, yeah, at least we are. Yeah. I think we've made, yeah. we made progress today anyway. The whole point is we can progress some of these yeah. actions yeah. Yes. before yeah. uh, 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 yeah. the five-year forward plan is still there. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. And Sharon Hackwood. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, no, I missed where we are. So, so now we are back. To 7.2. Yes, 7.2. Right. Right. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, to, thank, I, you. I leave the now. Nick. Right. Nick. thank you very much for coming. Uh, yeah. Guy and uh, Neil. Nick. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> right, can we go to 7.2.1? <laughs> the situation of the phase uh, court. Some ground there. Do you have anything to that? There's no recommendation here. No, no reports from the, any of the companies? No, no, it's been really difficult to get people coming in. I don't know if that's because they've got problems and issues with time or if they're catching up work from lockdown. So they seem to defer it until the next meeting? When I've got some folks and I can get to work. Okay, let's defer that one then. Right, I think Anna has now arrived. Oh, that is. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, yes, bottom right hand corner. Tony, do you want to take over the chair? Where is it? You did. Yeah. Or shall I carry on until he comes in? Yeah, I'll carry on just until at least he's on mute. Right. Yeah, carry on, Michael. You see, go in. Uh, right, 722, the uh, play area. Any progress on that, Dom? Uh, Carry Any... has completed the form today, and this will be going up on Contract Finder, so hopefully we'll know something. The um, application form needed to be in for December for a January meeting to make a decision on um, additional funding. So. I can only bring it back as we get progress. So this will come back in January or February? Yeah. Then. The um, Envert grant application was submitted today. Right. That was uh, up to £50,000 towards the cost of the right. May era replacement. Okay, do we move on then? 72.3 on the energy situation. Suggestions, Dale, which way we head on this? Uh, well, this is something as Rachel's um, highlighted in the budget. There's a green resources for all sites budget, which currently has £5,000 in it. So these solar panels are coming in at twenty to £35,000 per site. Um, it's not something that we've budgeted for. The approach is coming in. I've had a, a fairly local company come in, um, ex Eco Cetera. Uh, they come highly recommended, but obviously here are the quotes and you don't have the money in the budget, so... We need to defer this until yeah. closer to the year-end. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. You happy with that? Defer it to close to the year-end? Can you vote on that? Can you vote on deferring that, please, those yeah. in favour? So that, sorry, Michael proposed. Roger, did you second? Yeah. yeah. John's up, Andy's up, 
Thumbs up. Heads up. Tongs up. Not Franken's up. Three, four, three, five, six. And the mayor is up. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That. Did the one not talk? Was it? Was Ed? There we go. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. So that's deferred until next year? So, just we know, yes, we know what the situation is yeah. financially. Okay. So, 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 Who wants to talk to that? Is that you, Rachel, or...? Um, I haven't got anything to, to add, really. I mean, the, um, this is the more in-depth breakdown uh, linked to the current budget and the full plan that council... Sorry, you're very faint to me, Rachel. Oh. I can't hear from me louder. Yeah, you need more of it. Is that okay. help? <laughs> Deep breath. Oh, <laughs> don't <laughs> I've just provided the report um, giving more in-depth information for the breakdown of, of all the youth budgets because um, it, it is a, 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 um, sort of inserted in different areas sort of throughout the, uh, the full budget plan. So uh, this shows um, the forward plan budget for, um, sort of for, um, for now and next year and moving forward. And also the in income and expenditures uh, to date um, against the current budget, just just to uh, sort of make it a bit clearer. And attached to that, but, um, Graham has also uh, provided um, indicative projected uh, youth project expenditures as well. Well, to your chairman of youth, you've got any uh, comments on that? Um, no, I'm still working my way through it. I know Tony's got some. Yeah, Tony, do you want to take over the chair, Tony? No, you can crack on for the moment. Um, I just wanted to say something about this particular youth budget. Um, I asked Graham for some very straightforward questions, of which he sent through a, a, quite a dialogue of um, uh, rhetoric, um, of which I've replied to that, and I'm waiting for his response. So as far as these youth budgets are concerned, I think they need to be deferred at this moment in time until we get accurate answers from Graham. I think Graham, Graham is in the meeting, so I think you, yes, uh, you are in a position yeah. to answer those questions. Uh, yes, I sent out, I think it was last Wednesday, um, an update report. It gave a brief overview to councillors, particularly the new councillors, in terms of the <coughs> significant amount of external funding we've released uh, in, in recent years. It's, uh, it's now bordering on you know, it's over £330,000. Um, I updated re the South Gloss Youth Activities Offer funding. We're currently in the second year of 30k. I've actually received top of the press today um, an email from the South Lost Council Commissioning Officer, who has said that in the um, tendering spec for that 30K, there is also an extension of two years um, if the, if the uh, spec is going to plan. Uh, and we, we report quarterly to South Lost on that, and we get positive feedback on our reports. Uh, and as far as the South Lost Commission Officer is aware, although there is budget tightness within South Loss, that is not an area that has been flagged at the moment as one that they are looking at. They should be able to confirm more when she meets, meets with the, uh, children, the new Children and Young People's Head, uh, I think, early next week. So that's the overall bit. In terms of the questions that Tony mentioned, I answered all his questions uh, specifically. 
in the update, and I received late last night some additional clarification questions from Tony, uh, which I'm happy to try and clarify now, if that helps. Um, can I just interrupt there for a second? You, yes, please. You just mentioned, sorry, you just mentioned there, Graham, for example, um, that the this particular possible budget from South Gloucestershire is at this moment. But the trouble is, we don't know what is going to happen. And like, like all the other aspects of what's happened so far from the bits of the meeting which I came in on, we're deferring things because we don't know what's going to happen until we get our budget through in January. So that's why I recommend that we defer this. We defer it or do we note it? Um, the the, the £10,000 that is guaranteed for the this problem, next The problem three is years. we are trying to... Um, we've got vacancies which we do need to fill so we can deliver the services we have contracted with South Coast to deliver. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we do need to go ahead and fill the vacancy as soon as possible so we can deliver those services. And I've spelled out quite clearly in the financial projection exactly what that delivery is in terms of where the services are delivered how frequently they're delivered, and the various delivery strands, so... Um, that's this document here, that's on the indicative. That would be three centre-based sessions at the new building located at the skate park. That would be two detached street work sessions in a variety of locations. It would be the continuation of our extremely popular girls youth project, and it would be the continuation of the Jubilee Sports session, which is located here. So seven sessions of delivery. Um, there seemed to be some confusion because I was asked how many staff we employ. Uh, and I've tried to spell out that that's actually quite tricky because it will depend on when you advertise youth work posts. You may get people who apply for some sessions or all the sessions. Uh, and so it's the total hours that we are delivering, which is the key factor there. Because, for example, let's take a very simple example. You may have the detached sessions where you have two pairs, with a pair of people going out twice a week. You may have people who only apply for one of those sessions. So potentially you could have four people delivering those two sessions. Whereas if you have the same two people applying to do either of those sessions, you could have two people. So um, I've tried to sort of represent the most important thing is the amount of sessions we're delivering and the, uh, the frequency with which we're delivering them. Thank you. Tony, do you want to come back? That doesn't really answer the big, sorry, yeah. It doesn't really answer the basic question. The basic question I asked, and I unfortunately don't have the email which I sent through last night uh, in front of me right this second, but I'll, I'll dig it out, was, for example, how many, and you keep saying it depends on this and it depends on that, I want to know how many youth workers are you looking or you're, you're wanting to have, and therefore, and how much, how many hours are they going to work in total so that we can work out exactly what this budget is, because I don't think we know. Uh, that's, that's in the response, Terry. If, 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 if I can just finish, and at this moment in time, all the conversations that, or emails that you're, you've come out with, is it depends on this and it depends on that. And I, it doesn't really answer the, the question of what is it specifically. Um, in, the update report, in terms of what you just said, Tony, in the update report, it clearly states the total amount of hours that will be worked to deliver those sessions. So perhaps it's worth councillors focusing on the number of hours, perhaps, rather than the actual numbers. Right. <laughs> yes, I, I can see the, see the logic of that. Um, how, how, uh, are you looking at hours per week or hours per month? How is it uh, 
it said it seven that's the amount of hours staff hours you would need to deliver those seven sessions <laughs> Good morning. So, how, many hours, how many hours do we do tonight per week? It says in the update report only, 51.75 hours per week. Ed, do you want to come in? Yes. Hello? Yes, come in, Ed. Okay. Uh, let, let, let's take the step uh, back to what Tony, what Tony was saying, because I was confused, and that's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I would like I would like to see this as permanent position, floating position, and then the expected hours for that. It's it's confusing if you're saying I've got a number of hours and a floating pool of people. It does it doesn't tell us very much. Yes, you've got a service delivery of a total number of hours, but I think it's key to know. Who are the permanent staff, and who are the volunteers? No. I can see the logic of that. In the, in the update report, we are talking about delivering seven youth work sessions. So that's seven periods of time where you engage with young people through that youth work session. The three centre-based sessions involve three members of staff on three occasions. Yes, but is that the same member of staff because it's just a label? You've got it in the question. That's the point. You don't know that until you go through the recruitment process. Ideally, in terms of the continued professional development of staff, in terms of staff retention, in terms of staff supervision, the ideal scenario would be you would have three members of staff delivering all of those three sessions, for example. Well, so, having been in professional youth work for 40 years, I know that sadly you often can end up with, say, three people delivering one session and another three people delivering two sessions. Until you go through the recruitment process, you do not know. All right. Well, let's 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 be let's be, let's be uh, toxicotropic about it. It's not soft and it's not solid. So, what your ideal position is, is you would like three permanent staff members, depending on the populace of application and pool, and then yeah. the others are purely volunteers as come along. And then you have a total delivery of the number of hours per line as you would go down along that assignment. No, you, you have employed people to deliver the seven sessions. You employ people to deliver the seven sessions. I understand that. That's the concrete part. Yeah. Concrete yeah. part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. And then what volunteers? You would build around that with volunteers. Yes, obviously, yes. Right, so you've got a... Co if it was ideal, you have a core, and then if you've got extra people, you would have extra hours. Is that a correct understanding? So the extra people, if you have seven sessions and they're an hour each, you have seven hours. Let's keep the math simple. Okay. However, if you wanted to extend that because you have a greater floating pool of people, would you have additional sessions? If you had the money to, if you, if I externally fundraise as I have previously to deliver additional sessions, yes, that's why I talk about. Uh, Project funding, for example, because that's one of the things at the moment I'm about to put in an application to South Gloss for short term project funds. It's part of a sort of a budget that's come up out of the, uh, the pandemic and the fact we're deemed to be essential workers. So that might be to, that might be to employ uh, two people to deliver a short term project of, say, four sessions. But that will be separate to the contracted workers. Okay, so I, I, I think to give Tony the answer, what have we got today that we deliver? What we've got today that we deliver, well, well because we've got severe staff shortages, uh, it's limited. It's limited to the girls project. It's limited to skate park occasional sessions at the buildings at the skate park. It's limited to. Um, the sports session at the Jubilee and various ad hoc stuff. That's what it's limited to. And I'm desperate to 
through the post so we can up the amount of service delivery. Yeah. At, the moment, at the moment, South Gloss appreciate the problem. Um, we've been doing virtual sessions, we do the one-to-one. -one. Well, for example, let's take it, would it be useful to give a little indication of yesterday, for example? Um, yesterday, I started off by doing an Instagram post um, to a closed group of young people to promote our evening session, which is a face-to-face -face session under uh, National Youth Agency guidelines, the red tier COVID compliant. Um, I then, on my way to work, I had a phone call by a young man who was not in a very good mental health state, and I was literally sat in my car for 45 minutes chatting to him on the phone. Uh, I was getting ready for um, the evening session, and I was coming out of Iceland at the Willowbrook, uh, and I was called out by a 17-year-old young man with his mother and his small sister, and we talked about CVs, job applications, stuff that's going on for him for 20 minutes. And then we came here and we delivered a COVID secure face-to-face -face youth work session with a group of girls and young women. And that was, you know, it's, that's why it's sometimes quite difficult. I think a lot of people have the notion that youth work is some, uh, the idea of a youth club delivered once a week during a fixed time. And um, professional youth work is a lot more flexible than that in terms of being hopefully rooted in a community and being available to offer that range and diversity of support to, to young people. I don't know if that helps or not. Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, well, that's very noble of you, No, it's my work. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but who tasked you for all this? You keep saying South Gloucestershire is asking for all of this, but as far as I'm aware, they don't have any youth workers at all in South Gloucestershire. No, that's why there's fairly good security now of the youth offer money coming to the State Town Council, because again, spelled out in the report, they want to fund town and parish councils and other organisations that show a clear commitment to a youth offer to young people. Therefore, by us having core funding from the town council budget, it enables us to draw in significant external funding. Yeah. And that is what we have been doing. I mean, once the uh, Bronx uh, Youth Work consisted of detached work meeting meetings wherever they were, and some structured meetings, um, then we had a skate park plus all the residuals of that involved, plus the detainers and associated costs. Now we've got short-term projects, residentials, rural project, youth minibus hire, and additional youth workers. I mean, where does this all come from? I mean, did I miss something? Did I sleep or something? Yeah, it's been in the five-year plan, Roger. Um, for some time. I think Rachel wants to come in and seeing she's joined author of this report, I think she may have something useful to tell us. Well, I was just sort of drawing up um, the budget that the sort of council had, had agreed or are due to look at. What I would say, and, and, and it, this has been highlighted in previous years, this is the max budget for the youth that council would um, uh, you know, are committing themselves to cover. Today, we've been nowhere near that. So any surplus, um, historically, has been ring spent. So I don't think that has been ring spent for this year going forward. So that will go into the um, uh, year-end surplus if it's unspent. But what I want to highlight, and to back up what Graham is saying, um, this this budget is insufficient to cover all the costs and and uh, uh, so the all these uh, things that sort of um, are planned um, with the youth provision um, are also down to being externally funded so councillors know where the upper limit of, of council funding is within the budget if that's what they choose to do you just yeah fine. You just mentioned there about um, uh, because the money hasn't been spent, you, you're going to ring, ring 
uh, pheasants here so that no. it could be no, it's, it's not for this year it, it was historically because that's what council Change to do. Yeah, so okay. it's not this year. Let's, let's not talk about the things because we want to talk about what's going to go on now and in the future. Um, I don't want to know what's happened before because there's certain things I think that's happened before which are in bad practice. But okay, let, let's talk about this as something now and going forward. Um, I, I get confused when, Graham, you use terminology like um, it's for the wider community. I'd like to know who that is. The additional work delivery, youth work delivery, the additional activities, what are they? What are the other events? And what is the short-term project? And finally, you talk about student placement. It, 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 to me, I just um, find this particular terminology is, 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 there's nothing specific in any of that, for one. But, but well, I, um, with respect, Tony, I just covered some of that, but I'm happy to go over again for you if it helps. Let's take the student placements first. Um, Why can't we? Let's, what's the wider community? I think you're talking about a phrase where I talk about children, young people, and the wider community in terms of yeah, youth What is yeah. the wider community? That's my question. But can you let me answer the question, please, Tony? Yeah, sure. Uh, children, young people, and the wider community use the skate park. Okay? At first, we raised the money for the skate park thinking it was going to be predominantly used by teenagers, but it is used by a wide spectrum age range. It's used by a lot of young children, it's used by primary age children, it's used by teenagers, and the term wider community means it's actually used by a lot of people in their 20s and 30s and even older on a regular basis. That's what I mean by wider community. Okay. In the, in the future, can we actually put that down as not the wider community, but people of different ages, or, or as you just explained? Because the wider community is, is such a woolly term, it doesn't is really specifically mean anything. And and I sooner you use specifics rather than these type of phrases. You can't have an action. Because we, we, we've got to deal with specifics, sorry, pensioners and pensioners. And, and I, can't keep, I can't work with the terminologies that you're using. I, I think we've had a good discussion on this. Can I ask a question to Rachel? Uh, where I'd be normally, if uh, unspent money against the budget is usually surrendered to the general fund. It's not green fence. Um, why are we doing that? Why are we doing okay. that? Um, so, it, we're not doing it this year, no. but uh, in the prior years, that was a council decision to ring fence the youth money because uh, the youth provision was still in development and that was actually um, approved formally at a council meeting following the chief of planning meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that, that was the council's choice, um, which then built up the reserves to then, then you know, to, um, be, uh, to then build up the youth position. And the build up of the reserves was a, a major contributory factor was because we were extremely successful at drawing external funding. So the extent of funding was spent before the core funding, hence the rollover. But generally, I mean, anywhere else you go, I mean, if you if you don't spend the budget, you lose the money. That goes to the general yeah. Yeah. Then, but, and yeah. the next year, the then next year you have to make the case again, you know. Yeah. So we decide that as a council vote. Yeah. Um, reverse. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's not happening this year. That, that, okay, yeah. right. but, that was, yeah. but that that explains why the, yeah. the youth reserve budget yeah. had yeah. built up so much because yeah. councillors had decided to invent it for a couple of years. Because we've been operating off external. Yeah, and you've been you've been the money that we've actually been using yeah. to pay for the staff is like through the South Gloss ten thousand yeah. pound a year. And the other bit, yeah. as uh, as Tony. The money keeps disappearing from one part to another one. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's like chase a lady, isn't it? It's like, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> you, yeah. Oh, but are you talking about the reserve money? 
Yeah, so I think this would be a to do. I mean, when it's spent, I think you put some, some of it in the other pockets. No, I mean, this is how our public accounts work. So we hold reserves, um, and they're literally the reserves, and they're all in the 3,000 pounds. Um, and then when, so, and generally that is reserved for a specific area of expenditure, and then the council formally um, choose to spend something. Like, like you, you have just done, um, possibly, moving forward yeah. with the, with the uh, storage at Rook So, yeah. we've got that money in the reserve. Yeah. When, and, and then it can go through um, a formal meeting with the council, and you're going to decide, right, we, we like this first, we're going to go ahead with it and approve it. At that point, that money has been rented specifically for that expenditure. So when the invoices actually come in for it formally to be spent, of course you spend that money has to be moved out of reserve and it goes to the expenditure side of the account. Because you've spent that money, you can't just leave it in the reserve. So right. any money that actually moves out of reserve, it's yeah. that council has approved to pay for. Yeah, yeah, that's all about, yeah. Um, the only different one is um, with the youth budget, and, and you highlighted this in your email, and, and sort of thank you for sort of um, sending that through because it makes it easier for me to see areas that I need to explain a bit more. Um, so we've got an un unallocated youth reserve that has been built up from the surplus funds that council would chose to ring fund. Then as soon as you choose to allocate it for a specific project, um, it will be moved into an allocated reserve. So it, it's not just sitting there for willy-nilly. As soon as you approve the expenditure of that and you get the invoice in, it then has to come out of those reserves and go on to the expenditure side. Because otherwise, if you just leave it in reserve, yeah. you don't spend the money, yeah. you can be out of balance. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, do you want to come in? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the explanations from both of you. That's great. It helps. Um, on the, if you take the page and go to the very part, there's a little section here that's not explained. And it says, in addition, we have attracted significant, there's a word, significant in-kind and sponsorship support which brackets to volunteer time and donations by food share, skate prizes, arts and sports resources, etc. How is that declared? If you're receiving donations, is, is uh, there a, a requirement that, that, that we see what that is, especially yeah. if it's money? This is stuff that's regularly reported in my, my bi-monthly reports. If we talk about uh, one of those aspects is corporate volunteering. Um, that happened a few years ago. Uh, that was a sort of a one-off uh, event which generated a lot of infrastructure, additional free infrastructure stuff like the picnic benches, the shrub benches and everything at the skate park. That was with a, a company I, I cannot mention, but you may have a good idea because of the risk assessment attached to the organisation. Uh, Fair share, they they've had a lot of publicity recently. We signed up to them. Uh, council had previously um, sent two letters of thanks to uh, the local Tesco Express. They don't, they may, um, to, it's actually stopped because of the pandemic, but for the past couple of years we've received um, loads of bakery products, a little bit of fruit and veg, and they have saved us having any costs for the delivery of certain youth work sessions, for example, smoothies or session, you know, sessions at the Jubilee or sessions at the skate park. Um, in terms of uh, donations, they are usually, uh, for example, that usually happens around festival time, and that would be um, in exchange for putting a skateboard company or a scooter company's name on the publicity, they would donate some bits and pieces 
for um, prizes or, for example, at the skate park we had uh, scooters that were free for hire, we had helmets that we loaned to young people, um, etc, etc. Um, we got a huge donation from a company of sports equipment, they stopped operating and they just dropped off I don't know, I should think of over a thousand pounds worth of sports equipment. We get sent free scooters occasionally, which we use again at the skate park. Um, a local woman who, due to a, a, a disability, she used to be a jewellery maker, and she just contacted me from seeing the work we did, and she dropped off, yeah, she literally was a jewellery maker at a market, and she just dropped off loads of beads and stuff that we use for our work with young people. Again, saving phenomenal amount of money and peace in our sort of craft and sports offers to young people. Graham, thank you for those examples. I think that's probably almost as far as we can take this. Yeah. We've been talking about it for 20 minutes, and I think all we really need to do is note this report and ask for officers to come back to either youth or finance in due course if necessary. Can I propose that? Yeah, yeah I'll second that. So that was proposed by Michael and seconded. Sorry, who seconded? I don't know, there were two people seconded. One was Roger and there's one uh, from the uh, body of the hall. Was it Tony? Yeah. I don't mind it, there's Ed's got his thumb open as well. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. What, right. what can we do in terms of the vacancies though? Sorry, can we just take a vote on that and then perhaps councillors yeah. might have good ideas on yeah. filling the vacancy? Well, can we just agree on that one? Barry's uh, happy, Tom's happy, John is happy, Fab is happy, Ed yeah. is, Andy is, yeah. Mary is, I think everybody is. Thank you very much. Me. Right, Graham, I don't know whether those not in the meeting heard, but Graham asked whether councillors have any suggestions as to how we can look at any problems that is now trying to trying to recruit staff. Right, so where do we normally go to recruit? Uh, we, have, we can sort of, we can use the South West website, we can, uh, we, we use our newsletter in the past, we can talk to other partners we have in the South West Youth Partnership. Right. Well, can I suggest we take all the steps that we've taken in the past and report back to a next meeting? On the uh, process, may is it okay if I try another round of recruitment? Would be best for the yeah. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Graham will do his update anyway, yeah. December leisure use. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Let's move on from there then. Um, yeah. And that takes us to Councillor Lewis. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Absolutely. I think it's yeah. reasonable to take it off for now yeah. and then. Yes, yeah. she can always resubmit it if she's still yeah. uh, okay. interested. Just remove them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was just pointing out that um, Elaine, the one that was raising uh, people not attending meetings, and uh, she isn't here and hasn't been in several meetings in the last few months, so uh, it seems a little bit ironic. But... I, I did actually ask at one of the recent meetings when she was last seen. She wasn't yesterday. Right, then we move on to uh, eight finance. We have to vote on that one, Chair, or can we just light it off? I'm happy to put it to the vote yeah, if it's always. Yeah, I don't know what's the procedure. Yeah, I'll second it anyway, John. Yeah, and Terry's got her thumb. So who proposed that? Roger, I think. Donald and Roger. John, second, whatever. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Roger, over to you. agreed. Ed's agreed, I'm happy. Franklin, yeah. Ben's mm. happy. Hang on a minute. Right. So, right, so can you vote again just so I can count, please? Mayor's vanished. One, two, three, four, Thank you, five, sir. six, seven in favour. Yeah. Sorry, eight in favour. Against? Two against. Fair and and the mayor has vanished. I thought Andy was against. Who's the other one? Uh, Fab, um, it was Fab and Andy, I think, again. Yeah, Fab and Andy. That's a surprise. Okay, thank you. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> right. eight, receive the minutes of finance and then uh, update on Jubilee Centre 8 1. We've taken it already in conjunction with 7.5. So we're now up to the review of current contracts. Yeah. Well, and that looks like you, Dal. Dal? Yeah, yeah hang on, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I thought you'd gone for a coffee break. <laughs> no, no, none of that tonight. Um, yeah, no, it was recommended that we look into uh, the three items the highway road maintenance contract expired um, within a month of me starting um, at Bradley State Town Council. And as per the report, these quotations are what were presented to um, the heads of chairs back in, I think it was in the March. And uh, yeah, obviously it was agreed um, that we continue using Ambient. Was it? Let me think, Yes, it was. Yeah. If you read the report, so the, there was a COVID-19 action plan approval was given by the Chair of Council, which was Councillor Tom Aditya, the Vice Chair of Council, Councillor Tony Griffiths, the Chair of Finance Committee, which was Councillor John Ash, and the Chair of the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee, Councillor Roger Avenin. Councillors agreed that the Ambulance Landscapes had submitted the best quote and always gave a good, give a good service thereby representing best value of money for the residents of Bradley Stoke and it was agreed to invite Ambience to maintain their highways and grass roads for another three years. Paragraph three of the report. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I thought there was a big um, uh, objection to that. I think one or two people were unhappy about uh, the work Ambience were doing or were not doing. I think that was the, the problem. I mean, it does say, if you read that further down with the officer recommendation, that we acknowledge that good, it has been, been difficult. Yeah, and in actual fact, you do have in your agenda pack a small map, um, and we do have a much bigger map on the wall in the office. And actually, this map does show that South Gloss cut the majority of the open spaces um, and ours are the, the high, specific highway verges but not all highway verges because if, if you actually, although you can't see it on here but I mean in the office you can look at the bigger map on the wall like on, I think on Brook Way there is like a couple of the verges that we cut but South Gloss cut the others it's very, very bizarre It is indeed 
Sorry, Tony, do you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, this particular uh, aspect of um, Ambien and the contract for three years was con a considerable time ago. Can anybody say how many times Ambien have actually cut the grass this year? As I thought. Yes, we will just be getting invoices when they start. It's we have invoices from them, so finance would be able to tell when we actually paid them for the cuts during the year. But my point is, you don't know whether they cut it or not. You're just going on an invoice which has been submitted. Yes. Nobody, but nobody, is checking whether they've actually cut it. That's why we put in there about the officer recommendation, which they'll put, so that the, the current contractor sends an email to confirm where the works have been completed, and then we physically go out and check what they've done, and get them to come back to see um, whether there's any works that are missed. Yeah. And we, we acknowledge it has been difficult this year because of, well, because of what? COVID can be blamed for everything, but yeah. it has been yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. But we will definitely be much better on the case next year. Um, and if I'm going to spare you, is because sometimes the residents will say, oh, this, you know, that bit of grass hasn't been cut. So when we can, they will then come into the office and identify where the grass, you know, where they live so we can pinpoint it. And if it's ambience, we will always go back to them and say, you've missed a bit. And they will then come out because some obviously they have their regular contractors or their regular staff but if the member of staff is on holiday they might as staff loss do regularly staff will miss emptying bins and that sort of anyway, thing anyway so, we, we've uh, signed them up now so it's a, it's a pay up the yeah. but we will definitely keep an eye on it over yeah. the forthcoming year i think that's just a thing to note for future action isn't it okay. uh, Roger and Mike. Um, Michael. We may, we may have signed them up, but they're on a 30 day notice. So they can go at any time. No, it's 30 day notice if the work, if, if they're not yeah. carrying out what they're supposed to do. But if we want to give them notice to quit, yeah. it's six yeah. months. Sharon, Sharon, if I could please finish. Um, what I've actually gone round, and you, I've got a photocopy of your map on the wall, and I've gone round and looked at some of these areas. And there are some of these areas they have not cut any edges at any time. And part of their contract is to litter pick, which they don't do, cut the grass and cut the edges. And they certainly don't cut the edges. You know, so, you know, they're not doing a good job as you make out that they have. Sorry. I'm not, I wasn't saying that they do, but I'm saying we have to check them properly, particularly in some occasions. I'm sure, Tony, if you've noticed any areas which are particularly in need of uh, action, if you draw Sharon's attention to it, she will raise it with ambience. Oh, I will, yeah, definitely, going forward. And also South Gloss, because South Gloss carry out the core cut in March and October. So actually, if there is stuff which still hasn't been done, we need to chase South Gloss about that because they've done the core cut at the end of the year. Ambience are finished now until next spring. Can right. so we just note this report okay. bearing in mind that the cut limitation is now passed? Yeah. We're just paying the noises, but nobody's checking it. We will definitely, I promise we will keep a close eye on it next year. Right. Well, let's look forward rather than backward, and we're sure that so by Sharon that we'll keep a close eye on it next year. And, and also, you know, it counts. We're always in the office. It counts if, if now that you've got, I know that map's not very good, but I mean, it's worth knowing in the in the area that you live in, specifically, you know, a couple of roads by you, <coughs> what ambience cuts, because then you can keep an eye on things yeah. as well. And if you say to us, you know, oh, hang on a minute. That verge seems to have been missed. We can take action and, and get that looked into. It, 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 it may be a good idea that the map that you have on the wall is either redrawn or photocopied and sent out to each councillor so they well, know. What I know that. 
what's that one? Oh, she's there. Dale was, that is something, sorry, I couldn't see you, Dale. I know that, that redrawing the map is something which you were looking, you're going to be looking into, isn't it? Because you've done that in the parish you were in before, and actually that would be really useful to have a smaller map, have it split up into smaller areas, definitely. No, I, I've done, in my previous role, the map work so old and so tiny and I've obviously I've done art so just a highlight all these areas and really good. Yeah. It's never it get through this map. It's the shape of the map is very difficult so it's gonna take me a good weekend to get that map traced it and then hopefully I'll be able to mark out and identify what areas what for example say three grass verges along Brookway heading towards such and such roundabout. So we've got the clarity and backup with the wording as well as the visual, if that makes sense. That would be very helpful. Yeah, I think and that would be really useful. Councillors, perhaps, could, when, once you've got the work done, sense small maps of their immediate areas yeah. where they actually live. I mean, I'm very happy to I can leave it all to John. <laughs> as well i think it's a, it's not just this contract that we should be really following up on making sure that what we're paying for we're actually getting i think we should be introducing in all of the uh, things that we're uh, the services that we're um that we're paying for that we follow up and actually you know determine that we are getting the service we're paying for not just paying the invoice here, here. Yeah, quite great. Right. Yeah, you think it's great. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. How is that allowed to be that way, though? Because that's not. Well, I don't know whether it is, but I think perhaps it's just. Any invoices associated with my work? Yeah, you're always. Graham always checks any invoices. Yeah, these yeah. yeah. must have been checked at some point because you can have years of invoices being paid and. No. Not sure that you've received the goods for what you paid for? No, I mean, we, obviously we don't pay invoices if we're receiving a, an actual something, but I guess perhaps, yeah, I mean... The services is harder than that yeah, to Yeah, it goods. is, yeah, but it's definitely something which we are right. more than keen to take on board yeah. and change right. ways of working. Can we move forward. on from that one, then? Would that be looked at financial regulations to make sure it's actually codified somewhere? Again, okay. what do you mean? So if, if you are receiving goods and services of something like a grass cutting, that there is there is a provision within signing off an invoice or paying that bill that you are mandated to go check for it. So I appreciate taking your word for it, but that's something that should be in some kind of financial regulation. Well we're looking at financial yeah. Got We're looking at financial yeah. rates and standing orders, aren't we? Mm -hmm. uh, December's finance linked to the awarding of contracts and um, that, with, uh, then coming back to full council in January for further discussion and decision yeah. and changing. So if that isn't already in there, something like that could definitely be put in. Rachel? I, I was just going to say, I know that I've been out for a while, but um, that was always the case before. I think this year has been a different situation with the sort of COVID going on because uh, uh, I, all I can say is from the finance side of things for us to put the invoices that through, um, when I was in the office, there'd obviously be sort of dialogue, right, you know, have we had this further? Yeah. Um, yeah. That goes without saying, I don't think it needs to be in the financial regulation because that, that should happen, but I think it's just we've gone through a very, very unusual time at the moment. I, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Tony? Yeah, um, I, I know we're going to talk about this at a finance meeting with reference to um, our procedures for payment, but we have paid £21,000 up front to a contractor before he's actually done one item of work. Now, to be quite frank, that's absolutely ridiculous. And it's apparently been going on for years. Yeah. So it's something that needs to stop. 
Let's refer that. Let's refer that to the finance meeting in the standard of payment when when that meeting is is in December. Rachel, I, I think that was already discussed at the last meeting, and and so it will be going forward. So. Yes, we don't okay. need to look at the, um, the people that we do pay up front for right. a year. And I, I have to say that was a really relevant point that we did raise, Tony, and, you know, um, and that's what councillors are, you know, sort of there, there for as, as well. Karen made the point that we really need to look at the people who are paid up front. Perhaps we could have a report back to finance on who those people are Oops. and how we can go about... Um, making sure things happen properly. Well, I think the two main ones that paid up front, their, their contracts broke up for renewal anyway next April, May time, so they will... Well, we can afford to wait till April next year and then perhaps uh, draft yeah, a yeah, more it, severe contract. Well, I think with the, with the contract, it would, need, it would need to be, when it goes out to quotes, that the, that everybody who quotes knows that, that their quote is like for not you don't get paid in June for the whole year. It spreads throughout the yeah, year, absolutely. depending on that sort of thing. So absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Tony. Tony. Yeah, I, 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 I um, fire and brimstone coming out of me at this moment in time. Absolutely outrageous that we should be considering paying people up front. The bloke could, or well, that company could go bust the following day. And you've lost twenty-one grand of of constituencies' money. This is outrageous. We should never even be thinking about it. No. And we're doing it to two contractors, really. Uh, uh, you know, the bloke could die tomorrow. God forbid. Yeah. Let's not take this line any further. Um, and the point's been made, contracts come up for renewal in the spring, and I think we need to make sure that when they're revamped, that they are done on state payments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can we move on from that? Yes. On one to two minutes? Mm -hmm. Very well. What's the part of Eight two two, Bell again. Yeah, Bell again. Yeah. Um, this was a review of the cleaning and consumables. So obviously, I've had to meet up with um, cleaning companies. I've only managed to meet up with one other and compare with who we currently have now. Um, the specification that we have been working from is on the report. And then there's an additional specification which I try to draft up to be a little bit more sim simple and a little bit more um, transparent. Uh, the hours that the second contractor proposed was 43.5 hours, which isn't a huge increase in numbers of hours to the, the current contractor. Um, and, and everything is within the report for the cleaning review um, that you asked for. Are you advising that we stay with the existing provider? Um, that's not something that I'm sort of in a position because we are actually in contract with them. I think we still have two years left to go. I mean, I was just asked to review. Uh, my opinion on this is something I'd rather not give at this point um, because that's what well, I'm going to do. We note this and expect a further report in the appropriate time. Yeah, I mean, we are in contract with the current contractor at the moment for, I think, another two years, uh, up until 2022, so... And the other thing which you did, Dale, was a review of the cleaning consumables, didn't you? Yeah. And that has been quite interesting because there is a vast difference in price, so we will definitely be changing our... Um, on that particular consumable is the cheapest person is actually a local uh, local business uh, partnership. Yeah. So when one looks at liquid soap and see it varies between five pound something and fourteen pound something, there's obviously a, a case to be answered. Yeah, and it yeah. does build up, doesn't it, over the years? It so. does. It may only yeah. be ten pounds a month, but uh, it's one hundred and twenty pounds a year, isn't it? Yeah. Right. 
So, note to that one. Happy to note that, everybody. Anyone to the contrary? All right. That is noted then. Key holding services. Yeah, I managed to uh, meet up with two two um, other companies. I haven't actually managed to speak to the company that we uh, use at the moment. Um, I have tried for the last three weeks, left messages, but nobody's actually got back to me um, for them to submit a, a refreshed um, quote. Uh, I think it's something that does need to go towards the finance um, committee because I think this actually is something we need to look Bearing in mind that the Hang contract... Hang on, Del, you've muted yourself for that. Oh, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> uh, I do think it's something that needs to be discussed further because it is very difficult getting hold of the people that we've used. And in lockdown, I was actually called in once um, by the company and they couldn't tell me which of our premises was um, alarmed, what was going off. And when I spoke to the gentleman, he said, I said, well, when, when are you coming to attend? He said, I'm in Scotland. Right. I just got one worry that we're not planning to look at this until next month and the contract expires only a few weeks later. That would be perfect timing because if you, oh, I suppose, when is it? What's the contract? Oh, yeah, January. I think it's the end of January 2021. I don't just expect that. Uh, I'm just worried that we get in the pillow situation where we have no cover at all in this area. It would be big if we get the call out, you know, right? Yeah. We don't, yeah. we don't get cover, do we? With the contractors... Yeah, the finance seems very common for the book, but they can handle it. Right, can we move on then from that one and take the officer's recommendation that it goes to finance next month? Sorry, who proposed that? I did. Do you second that? Yeah. It's fine. Right. Uh, Take a vote on that one. Uh, I've got Franklin, I've got John, I've yeah. got yeah. Ed, I've got Andy. Yeah. Terry, I think, and did you put your Terry. hand up? I think that was a unanimous one. Terry? Yeah. Yes, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you. That would be December Council then. December Finance. Sorry, December. Apologies, December Finance. Right, planning, we've got two planning reports. They're just to receive. Right, let's move on from that one before we receive them. Uh, leisure and youth. We've got the four towns and the... First of all, you've got the minutes. Sorry, I'm moving ahead of myself. I'm <laughs> yeah. Trying to get a minutes of the planning and environment committee spoke them. Uh, just received. Just received, agreed. Sorry, doesn't have to receive them. No, I think that's all right. Leisure and youth, you just received. Right, then we received leisure and uh, youth. And we move on to four towns who have given us the modern version of war and peace. Well, the, if you remember, for those councillors who were on leisure, youth and amenities, it came to leisure, youth and amenities in October, and we did ask for more clarification on various points before council decided whether to award them the service level agreement for uh, this, for 2021. Just no, but I'll just back. Um, unfortunately, there was nobody from Four Towns Transport at the meeting for councillors to ask a question. So I, they deferred a decision until November for council. So I emailed them on the 20th of October asking for, telling them it would be coming to this meeting. Um, and asking for the clarification on the two points that councillors wanted to know. I then sent a follow-up email on the 3rd of November, 
because I hadn't heard anything. Um, I then sent a follow-up email on the 13th of November, sending them the agenda for tonight's meeting and encouraging someone to come and to be able to ask the question to enable councillors to make the decision. I heard absolutely nothing. Can I suggest that we defer this until they actually do take the trouble to turn up? Yeah. So I think it's going to send by leisure use. Roger's second that. Favour. Terry's got her hand up. Ed, Andy, Tony, Tom, Rod, John. and John, oh. and Fab. I think that's unanimous. Thank you very much. It might be worth actually communicating to them that we won't be even considering it until we get absolute cast iron guarantee that they will be arriving because I just think it's wasting our time. Yeah. Well, at least for a moment, I know it's yeah. yeah, it's not it's not that difficult. We just want to know how many people. Yeah, it was a very simple question. Right, a confirmation of the signing out of, of signing out signing off of the audit. No updates from South Gloucestershire ward members number eleven. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got that. Um, well, right. that's because there will be any updates that there are. Right. Roger, any updates? Um, the Mayor of Frank, the most important. Frankly, I'm told now you're the most important member on South Gloucestershire Council. You should go first. And the others will fail in your wake. Yeah. I had, I had one on the, um, I think, Brookway uh, pathway where we initially engaged with the relevant officers how they could help us with the. Uh, with that, and I think the last response came from Matt Kosham to Sharon concerning the um, yeah. opportunity to come in to engage for us to see how we can move on. But I think there was one area of, within the email that I wasn't happy with that, that we haven't had any incident, so it wouldn't be a priority. But I made them aware that we don't have to wait until accident or anything happen before they can action that. So hopefully during the basic, they will consider that and take the relevant action. Tony? Yeah. Tony has a question for you, I think, Franklin. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with what you said, uh, Franklin, there with reference about uh, their witness. There's no re yeah. record of any accident. There's only yeah. because possibly people haven't reported it. But, but, and I concur exactly with what you say there. And one thing which I picked up is that they were talking about having a Zoom meeting. I don't think a Zoom meeting is going to meet what we want is we want a site meeting exactly. um, yeah as they were talking about oh, well, well we'll have a zoom meeting but that, that's no good we yeah. need a site meeting to work out what we can and what we can't do it definitely needs to be a meeting because i i personally didn't understand what the South Gloss officer was talking about because he was talking about at the back of footways and it just yeah I it yeah. almost seemed like South Gloss were talking about a different area to yes. where yes. we think it is so yeah. as Tony yeah. said we definitely need a, a proper meeting yeah. perhaps Sharon you can go back and ask them for a well, meeting think, on I site well I think because of lockdown at the moment they're not they won't be doing anything but mm. we will definitely push for a, a a physical meeting after the second December. I've had them have a look at the location before we can do any meeting or whatsoever. Yeah. So they need their physical presence will be required. So I mean yeah. contact mark for them to action that for us. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Um I frankly I wrote to you and Sarah and um uh, regarding the tenth of this meeting, and I know it's moved on since then, but I'm just wondering whether we could, frankly, would you be able to communicate to the to the resident that raised the initial query about the initial complaint about it, because he has um, been in touch, sort of saying that he's not getting any communication back. Um, so I think it might be a good idea if you could just um, communicate to him what's the current status. Do you think I that think the, original, the original complaint came by uh, uh, Steve. But if yeah, that's it, exactly, yeah. But he yeah. has also since then sort of complained that he's not getting any feedback. 
So what South Rosta shall we normally uh, communicate by uh, Sharon? Because the issue was first raised to uh, Bradisok Town Council before we escalated it to South Gloucestershire. But it's gone round and round in circles. Yeah. Uh, Sharon has actually communicated to Stephen that she's raised it with yourself and uh, Sarah. And Stephen has since then come back saying he hasn't heard anything from uh, from any councillors. But I've written to him and suggested that um, we met, we have a meeting. I've told him that that's what the, the, the intention is. Um, but I didn't actually want, you know, obviously I wanted to understand exactly what was going to happen before I communicated back to him. But I'm just thinking it might take a little bit of heat out of it if you could communicate with him directly. Uh, I will take that on board. I think the last response came from the officer on Monday, just last Monday. So, oh, okay. yeah, so yeah. we have this feed on that and potentially okay. a message from Mark uh, Kasham and uh, Kashmore and the team. Marvellous. And will you copy me on that just so that um, he knows that because he's aware that I've been trying to progress it as well. So if you copy me on that, please, then at um, least you can square the, the circle or whatever. Uh, I'll do that, Derry. And another, another update is yes, I received from Police and Crime Commissioner on a road safety fund, which is available for community to apply for. I've just forwarded it to Sharon and Odo for them to create. We can use that funding for anything that we think would be helpful within our community. How much, Franklin? Oh, month is grants up to five thousand pounds. Oh. So, the initiative for road safety. So road safety. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, point at Brook Way. Yeah, all right. <laughs> carry on. Jerry. I was disagreeing that uh, with Karen's point. <laughs> <laughs> if it can be used for road safety, could we try and get some money for something to do at the Brookway pinch point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's money available, perhaps they ought to look at doing some speed checks uh, outside uh, the uh, Bailey's Court Centre because if you go down there any time after about eight o'clock at night, the average traffic speed is about fifty-five. If if we could apply, the deadline is the thirtieth of November. So please, you can take. Hey, Roger and I don't want any speed checks in Bobby Stokes, thank you very much. It's only bad drivers who object to them. Right. Um, uh, we'll, we'll say, John. Yeah, Roger. Okay, right. Um, quite a very, very controversial planning application. And, uh, I asked for a site visit against all the rules. And uh, we voted for it. <laughs> we just didn't say the last ship. But that was eight five houses in Thornbury, so it doesn't really affect us. Mm -hmm. Apart from the usual run of licenses to taxi drivers, uh, nothing local. Uh, so. Thank you. John? Tony? Is it, is oh, Tony, sorry. Yeah, it, it, just a question. Um, I noticed from um, one of the uh, Facebook chat groups for North. Bradley Stoke. There's a gentleman um, doing Indian takeaways from his house. Now, apparently, he says he has a five star um, oh, so hygiene to do. Yeah. Like it. However, yeah, it's not it doesn't necessarily mean that he's actually licensed. Yeah, you can. I was just wondering whether we could um, ask yeah. our licensing guy, I think is um, key, possibly, whether or not this chap may have a license or not to actually operate. He's on it, but he hasn't been on many of the panels, just lately. Yeah. Uh, or who, whoever it may do. I can, I can certainly ask South Gloss licensing, yeah. but yeah. I will need an address to know. Yeah. Like a, a number well, of <clears throat> at this point in time, I've got the guy's name and phone number. I could probably ask him what it, where he yeah. well, right. order a takeaway. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I can definitely um, look into that one. Having had one of our restaurants absolutely hammered for their safety, I think we uh, almost have a, a duty to make sure this is up to scratch. Yeah. I mean, right. you have hygiene, but that doesn't necessarily mean you've got a license for okay. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Right, John? Sorry, John. Over to you, John. No, nothing from me. Thank you. All right, thank you, John, very much. We'll report what I like. Uh, right, financial matters. 12.1. Confirmation of the audit. I see we've got very well. Ticks all over the place. Yeah, wonderful. From the uh, well done, Rachel. Note that and pass our congratulations on to all the staff involved. I'd, I'd actually like to, um, to shout out a big thank you to Terry, that uh, so oh. it, our, Terry, our contractor, <laughs> uh, but, um, that sort of filled in whilst I was away. Um, we did work together on some of this together, but it, it, we couldn't have got it through without her. So, um, that, if praise is being thrown out, Rachel, grab your share. Hopefully. At the same time, there's a consultancy for another couple of months until Rachel gets her um, COVID jab and is actually able to um, venture back yeah. out. So, yeah. yeah. She has done an amazing yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, um, Generally, uh, we put the sign up on the website, and the council historically have um, given their response. But but it's actually been the same wording for about five years. So I put the last audit sign off uh, wording there, and it's just I mean you haven't got to give a response. But um, would you like to? Uh, I'm sure answer? you can come up with some synonyms for some of the adjectives. <laughs> Well, I mean, would you like to go along with something along the lines of what? Absolutely. I, I personally would. What, instead of that one? Well, no. this is the, that was the one from last year, and Rachel's saying, do you want to sort of reword it so it looks like not like just copy and pasted yeah. from last year? Well, so, do you want to give a response? You haven't got to, and not all do you think we should formally record our phone? I'm just suggesting yeah. that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. But I, do th I do think you should get a response, Rachel. Okay. What, a different response? No, you, well, no, just what's laid out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just say, if you perhaps... No, it's on the top bit, it's bottom the bottom bit. Yeah. The yeah. council's yeah. response. Yeah. So what's there is there is what was... Oh, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, wrote last so year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could... Swap over the words procedure or accounting in the third line and just put them in a different order. I think if you came up with something that has the occasional different word but it's conveying the same sense, Rachel. We'd be very happy with that. Yeah. Is anyone really going to be sitting comparing last year's wording to this year's wording? Because if they I'm sure Tony would if you were involved. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I would. I would. I would. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll change the wording around um, a bit so that they can come Right. Um, investment review and strategy. Do it, do it. Well, we, sorry, do we actually want to move, um, yeah, I suppose we ought to, shouldn't we? Do we accept the audit standoff and uh, convey our thanks to all the staff involved? Yeah. 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 seconding that? Yeah. yeah. Those in favour? His hands going up everywhere. Yeah. Except John, who's gone off for a dog yeah. walking break. Right. Sorry, so that was... Tom's, Tom's yes. Everybody except who's here except John, who seems to prove not be here. So, you proposed a more second introduction, yes. I understand. Thank you. All right. Right, investments in your view. Right, um, so 
and things along those lines. So council's current strategy um, is that we don't invest in high risk in this high risk area uh, due to the unpredictability and exposure to loss. Uh, and based upon this, council will not use this type of investment. Um, shall I just Sorry? <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at it. Shares are a good idea. <laughs> shares in Amazon are a good yeah. idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll have to employ a financial advisor to go there. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then, <laughs> and then links to loans, this is um, loans that council um, offer to sort of local enterprises, local charities, things like that. Um, I'm just sort of going to skim through that. Um, Bradley, uh, council strategy at the moment on that is Bradley State Town Council has adopted a narrow approach to investment, prioritising security and liquidity, and loans are not deemed prudent with this strategy. In addition, if this type of investment is high risk, it would require a robust debt recovery mechanism. Um, and then moving on, liquidity and security strategy. Um, uh, 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 uh. Um, so this is looking at how liquid uh, we um, we are with our investments and um, giving um, a maximum investment period where um, the money is physically sort of tied into an investment and we can't get it out. And at the moment, Bradley State Town Council has determined that there's a maximum investment period uh, for 12 months. And that was linked to us having uh, the one-year fixed rate bond. Um, now, out of any any of the um, um, the uh, strategies that council has at the moment, this one we might have to revisit, and that's purely going to be down to um, um, the decision that you'll make at the next stage whether you want to invest in a one-year bond. And, uh, more importantly, whether any are available at the time that we would be looking to invest. So we might have to come back and revisit that one at some point. Um, and then uh, going down below, just to, you know, so that councillors have got a full history, um, I'm not going to sort of read through it all, but we've got um, the strategy that was agreed um, in uh, the 2017-18 um, uh, 18, 19 and 19, 20. So the strategy that was agreed last year, um, uh, councillors discussed the position at the full council meeting on the 18th of September and agreed to maintain the current investment structure and not to increase the investment with the CCLA local authorities property fund as the current level exposed capital to a manageable risk and it would be improved to increase this risk further in view of the current uncertainty within the property sector. So, I mean, this is the council decision. I think, I mean, as, as RFO, I think everything in here is still valid, but it's obviously up to council if you want to sort of change any of your investment strategy. Anyone any comment on this, Ben? I was going to say, in light of um, COVID and the hard year we've all had, and it's been quite difficult, and we've deferred lots of other decisions and things related to money and other committees, I would be wanting to propose that we maintain um, the current investment structure as is, with no changes in light of the current situation, and just update the data as necessary in this document to reflect that. Roger? Yeah, the, the plates that we get in now are so appalling and the, I suspect at the end of the, this one here, um, which is maturing on the 24th of December, the year of trust tax, 1.8, you won't even get 1.8 now. No. I mean, it's going to go down, 
And so it's a carry which carry which bank great. I mean they're all, you know, so get one percent would be lucky, I think. Mm -hmm. So you okay. might as well leave it as it is. Okay. So I think we uh, we'll put it all on the dog. I went dog racing once but they all beat me. <laughs> um, um, a big can it all be revisited at any time? It's just a legal requirement that it be reviewed at least annually. So if things change um, this next year um, or when the reinvestment periods come, uh, we can we can just amend it at that stage. Yeah. Well, how about adding to the um, proposal, Rachel? If the market, for any reason, next year changes materialistically to the point we want to bring it back to, I don't know, say finance initially, we can do that. Yeah. Next year. I, I don't even think you need to put that in. Nice. Okay. Just do it. Yeah. 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 I think we have a. Uh, Proposal that we thank you for all the work that's yeah. gone into it, Rachel, yeah. by you and your colleagues, and we propose no change to the. Uh, yeah. I think that's what uh, Roger and uh, Ben have proposed. Yeah. Ben wants to come back. No, that's it. I'm back to back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> favour? I thought he wanted to leave the room. Uh, Tony, John, Franklin. I'm trying to. Hi, John. I'm trying to uh, say yes. Are you trying to put your Terry's thumb? lost her thumb. Yeah. Yeah. That's a one, thank yeah. you. Yeah. We take you in favour, Terry. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. Um, move on then to the lease agreement for increases. No, we've got investment review. Next one is the actual investment review. So that's 12.2.1. We've just got the investment it. strategy and now it's that one. Right. So that's basically what you're going to look at doing when those bonds. Three quarters of them, actually. I must admit. Yeah. Now that one's looking at what you'll do when the bonds expire at the end of this year. So this is the actual. So what you've just agreed is the strategy, which is the framework upon which the, um, the council could can invest. Um, so. Um, I've already explained sort of the uh, investments that we are holding, but I've also given some background to um, to the um, investment um, supplies that we have used. So uh, Cambridge and Counties Bank um, is very, very sort of uh, well recognised with ta within town and parish councils. They only uh, deal with businesses, charities and councils and they're really highly regarded and um, I've seen as a safe port of call, uh, especially at the moment. Um, so I I've given all the sort of background information there. Uh, they've got a, they're very, very liquid as well, um, which is, uh, you know, sort of a bonus at the moment. Um, so we, we covered some of it previously. So. Um, we've got the one-year fixed rate bond with them that's coming out in January, that's 1.7%, and we've got the 180-day notice business savings account as well. Uh, then the other um, uh, provider uh, that we're using is United Trust Bank, and again, and both of these um, uh, providers offer above the standard rate of um, uh, returns. Um, without sort of taking high, high risk. So uh, the United Trust Bank, again, is, is highly regarded. Um, and in fact, they've um, been awarded uh, in 2019 the Development Lender of the Year at the Specialist Finance Introducers Award and Best Secured Loan Provider at Money Facts Award. Um, they, they always appeared um, in the um, uh, investment comparison sites and, and do offer, tend to offer really good returns. Um, at the moment we've got a 1.8% bond, um, as previously said, that's due to mature um, Christmas Eve, funnily enough. So I'm not going to come in and reinvest on Christmas Day, I'm afraid. Um, and we've got 60,000 for the CCLA, but, uh, so I'm giving all the background information there. Um, performance and yield um, since uh, over the last year. So actually, the the CCLA has maintained that it's 
this year. Um, but uh, like I said, uh, the, there has been some capital depreciation, but we're looking at this as a long-term investment in return for uh, um, in exchange for a good return. So that's where we're standing at the moment. So council has already got a strategy in place. So the end and everything that we're invested in at the moment um, complies with that strategy. So we're now going to be looking ahead uh, for the next year in particular to the maturing bonds. So um, if I just read through, looking ahead, the interest rates are currently very low and they're locked investment providers and no longer offering a one-year bond at this time to new investors, investors due to the unstable position. Uh, both of the current one-year bonds, which are due for redemption over the next few months, have offered a very attractive comparative yield over the last year, and both banks usually offer a good preferential rate to existing investors who decide, who decide to reinvest. Um, I have been told unofficially that although current investment rates, etc., have not as yet been issued, it is hoped that reinvestors will be offered a one-year bond option that is close to the rest of the market, although at a lower rate than the current um, investment returns, obviously. And then below, I'm just um, showing what uh, United Trust Bank and Cambridge and Counties are offering at the moment, um, so, which is open to the market. So hopefully, we'll come in above that, um, but we're not going to know until they actually contact us. Um, and Cambridge and Counties aren't offering a one-year bond to the open market at all. Um, so, recommendation, bearing in mind the current situation, the CTLA property fund investment is fulfilling the investment strategy agreed last year and um, should be retained at the same level. Um, it should be noted that a 90 day notice period to redeem the investment was introduced recently, which was reported to October Finance. Um, the 90 day period commences on the day that CTLA receive the redemption request and then the sale will be processed on the first trading day after the 90 calendar days have passed um, and they trade on the last day of each month. Um, the two fixed rate bonds is due to mature in December and Jan and council should consider waiting for the reinvestment terms to be issued uh, before making the final decision. Uh, in addition, the position concerning Brexit uh, should hopefully be known, which may possibly bring some stability to the market and improve potential yields. Um, I like to that as well, that with the vaccine coming in as well, that should, that may well have done a very positive uh, impact as well. Um, well can I ask a question, Rachel? Sorry? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. How much have we got in this United Trust Bank? Because I know it's, it's, um, it's not protected by the, the FCS. None of, our, none of our investments are protected because we're over the threshold. Because what? We're over the, we're over the threshold, which I think is... So um, no, 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 um, our turnover is an excessive, I can't remember. Uh, oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's because our yeah. turnover yeah. is so high, yeah. we don't yeah. register, yeah. we don't qualify yeah. for any of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. But what I would say is United Trust Bank, um, from doing research, and definitely Cambridge and Counties Bank, are very, very sort of strong banks. They're not able to that. They're, they're very liquid. Um, which is, you know, for one of the reasons that um, we're with them in the first place. Uh, so they, are, they do offer sort of better returns than the general bank, and they are offering um, more stability um, as well on the term. So, um, what I was going to say is, uh, council could therefore consider the re reinvestment of the bonds when the cost terms are known, and this could be emailed to Chairs or Council could wait until January and make a decision for both ones at that point, depending upon the closure there. When these, uh, when these bonds expire, we could go on a, 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 a virtual comparison site to see what offers there are. Really. Uh, like we, we, can, we can, but 
people for a camp for this time to go everywhere. So, um, and that's what I'm saying. Cambridge and um, Counties Bank will not appear on the comparison site because it's not open to everyone. Um, it's actually, I can't remember, I can't remember whether it's Oxford or Cambridge University. They set this up uh, and this fund is their pension fund and it's very, very safe. It, 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 they, got, they have to jump through um, hoops uh, to be compliant with their safeguards and things and uh, they have to maintain a very, very strong um, cash base. So, we could go on to the comparison site, um, but we're not going to uh, see everything. And generally, I mean, um, I wouldn't say that we just immediately, you know, sort of do the index when the index is going to come up. We would sort of have a look around, but we have got to take into account security as well. And historically, uh, these two providers have tended to offer one of the best returns. Uh, for the area of investment that we can go into without going into high risk or equity. We can't go into high risk. We're not allowed. Well, we're, we're in CPLA, which is high risk, but you just agreed a strategy where we're not going to. Uh, <coughs> General Finance, have we? I'd like to go to the recommendation, personally. I'd like to go with the recommendation that Princess. Right, Fairness proposed and Roger has seconded that we go with the uh, officer's recommendation. Certainly, thank you for a very full explanation, Rachel. Mm -hmm. uh, time for that in the vote. I see Terry's got a thumb up. We've got three hands up here. Right, Tony, John, Bad, Franklin. And Andy, everyone happy, Andy? But, um, oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, what, what I did um, is that the email shared was that we discussed the January meeting. I mean, some, sometimes um, some of these do close, so I would recommend that, um, you know, sort of, uh, if I could possibly email around to chairs um, to, to agree a reinvestment as it comes up. But I would have to obviously have a look outside the market to see what other rates are being offered. Could you give me hard copy, please, Rachel? Mm -hmm. I will print out. Uh, uh, Sharon's going to print out for me. <laughs> yeah. My mouth is still eating the cheese, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, uh, lease the range agreement increases. Right, another Rachel one. Rachel? Setting our money's got from you today. Um, it's the annual review of the uh, four leases that we have. So we have the Bold, Cricket and Scout. Um, they're fairly straightforward. Their leases have a built-in mechanism uh, that is linked to the CPI figures um, for August and September. Um, and this is actually specific in their leases. Um, that we that the lower of the two are applied to the increase for the following year. So uh, base August was 0.5 percent, September 0.7 percent. So based upon these, the August CPI increase should be applied. And in the report, I've got the um, I've, I've shown all the and scout and the increase that would be applied. Um, we're not going to make big money. <laughs> big money from this, but um, that is a built-in mechanism that is part of the lease. Um, the, uh, I have contacted uh, all three parties and advised them, and you know, they, they've all agreed because it is written into the lease. Um, the Bradley Stoke Radio um, are, are different. Um, they haven't got a built-in mechanism. So I put the full history of the lease charges that have been applied, and at the moment uh, they pay £850 a year, but they do pay for their electricity separately, um, and we include a separate meter because uh, they, they can it can be quite high usage at times. Uh, but they have sent in um, um, uh, what they uh, uh, what they decided after the meeting. 
uh, so the Hunt Inspectors of Committee and taking me to account the uncertain year ahead of us all, Rugby said Radio would like to renegotiate the lease at £150 for the year um, 20 to 30 to 30 to work. I think Could that be 21-22? That's what I'm about to say. I think that's yeah. the next year. Uh, once our risk assessment and studio improvement work is complete, we also hope to be able to reopen our lease rooms to our community of presenters and volunteers with strict procedures and protocols in place. So basically they want that they'd like it frozen for next year. Yeah, I was just going to comment on that some of these costs here. The scouts seem to have the highest charge of all here. Um, both the bowls club and the cricket club have got service level agreements which give them not bowls, cricket does. The cricket has a use yeah, cr yeah cricket club, so use cricket yeah. club, bowls don't have anything. Right, okay. But um, I was just commenting on the branch of radio, I mean, they have a service level agreement. No, they apply for community development grant aid, which they're just about to apply for for yeah, the next year. Um, I'm not sure whether they apply for yeah. the 3,000. Yeah. 3,000, yeah. And they also apply uh, occasionally for grant funding as well. So the you know, to pay 850 when they get 3,000 perhaps and 500 maybe grant funding um, is a bit of a nonsense. I don't see why they're a special case, quite frankly. They had previously offered to pay 950 mm. and we, we froze it for them and then went to 850. I mean, that's months. what comes of having members of Bradley Stark Radio on the council, you know, obviously, you know, it's so, over. Uh, um, I think my turn is very time. Sorry. Yeah. Um, whilst we're talking about the uh, cricket lease review, um, I've spoken at length to an accountant who used to, um, who was a prolific, prolific cricketer, who um, was the accountant for Bath Cricket Club uh, for many, many years. And um, a question which I asked at a previous meeting if we could find out what other authority pays a cricket club to cut their own wicket because he's never heard of it that that was um i i don't know to be honest i mean that that, well, that was a question i raised at a previous yeah. meeting and nobody yet has come back we pay a huge amount to the cricket club for cutting their own wicket and I don't think there's another local authority, which the question I was asked to find out whether there's another local authority. All, all I, I think Dell, I mean, Dell is, is looking into that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's another. Sorry, Is that another job for Dell? Yes. <laughs> Dell, come in, please. Hang on. Um, yeah, no, it's something I'm looking into. Um, it's something that does need to come up because we have uh, received from the person who's actually doing the work, um, they want to increase what they're doing by 50%. Um, so I'm actually desperately trying to get in um, quotations from <coughs> ground staff who can give a like-for-like -like quotation on the 43 weeks times 18 hours uh, sorry, 43 weeks times 18 hours um, contract that's currently um, in place. So that that is something that's definitely going to be looked at and scrutinised by by the officers and brought back. Yeah, my my question is, why are we paying them to cut their own wicket? Because I've never heard of it before. It's it, our wicket. It, it's our wicket. It, it doesn't matter whether it's our ground or not. It's it's a it's a facility that we're paying them to get their own wicket, and it's not generally done, as far as I'm aware, at any other cricket ground, whether they're local authority owned or not. My mm -hmm. question was, can you tell me if there's another local authority which pays a cricket club to get their own wicket? I don't think there is. Rachel, do you want to come in? I can't answer that one directly. Can I just give the history behind it because? 
they were hoping to increase it, and we, nobody would know, um, you know, sort of how they would develop and get bigger. And if the mechanism had been put in place, you know, and um, you know, sort of their turnover had increased substantially, it would be ridiculous just to apply a four pound twenty five um, increase um, at zero point five percent. So that that was why it was initially. Um, in, uh, not put on and um, just looked at on an annual basis. Yeah, but there's such a big difference though, isn't there, between 850 and 5,800? Um, completely different leases, yeah. Huge difference. Well, there's a big difference as well between having a full pound, 50 or whatever it is, to when they previously offered 950 in previous years. Mm -hmm. does, it, does it kind of suggest, though, Rachel, that we probably should do more like an analysis of what they're paying? With them, does it suggest that we should be doing a better, a better analysis of what they're paying? Well, I, 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 suppose, I suppose you could ask to see the accounts before deciding on the lease amount. I mean, historically, that that's not happened because the council has supported the ratio as uh, as an important part of you know sort of um, the community. Uh, you know, but. At the same time, it, this is completely down to council, and I suppose yes, it does make sense for them to send in some financial um, information on which to base any increase. And they, they will have to submit their um, financial um, yeah. information linked yeah. to their community development grant aid application in December. And they got to go in. Yeah. I was just going to say, but I've not been involved for a couple of years now, but. Uh, the annual turnover and the rough cost of running the station when I was involved was about eight and a half thousand a year. Uh, the initial thought was that the station was going to be self-funded because advertising revenue was going to come in, but that didn't happen. Um, certainly there were issues where Ofcom wouldn't allow certain forms of funding and advertising and things like that. So the station has never really been in a situation that it was going to make enough money to pay a, 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 a reasonable rent. Uh, they only charge, whereas I think the, the bowls and the cricket charge reasonable memberships. Again, unless anything has changed since I left, it was £20 a year per member, so there wasn't a great deal of subscriptions for membership coming in. It was tried to be run as low cost as it could basically whilst providing a service for the community. Thank you for that. Well, you can, yeah, yeah. Do we uh, make these figures? Uh, thank Rachel and her well, team. You need, yeah. to, you need to agree it, agree if you're happy with those increases and what you want to do for the radio increase. So, I'm happy with the increases there, but I'd like to have the more information about the radio. More information about their accounts, so you can. The accounts all are on um, Company's House because they're a limited company, a not for profit limited company. All of the accounts are, are up there. That's fine, so we can have we can get all that together then for a future council meeting for. I think we can have these accounts that is set too high. Don't forget these are children who have to fund this. Well, the parents. They're not, they're not adults in the parents. Parents, but well, right, yeah. The cricket club would probably have to fund that out of their pocket money, or in some cases. Well, I was thinking pocket money, I didn't think yeah. children yeah. have pocket money nowadays. So the point is, it's a mastercard, isn't it? Right, do we, uh, do I gather from Ben that proposing that we agree the figures for the goals, cricket, club and the scouts no. and we want to know more detail for the radio. Not more detail on the radio, but I don't agree with them. I think it's the scouts and sense of can't talk Can I just say the um the the brawl agreed sort of years ago the sort of lease amounts um, and set by again set by council. What I would say is the difference between the bowls and the cricket is that the um, uh, from the scouts is that the scouts run throughout the year, and um, um, 
so that they've got um, dedicated space Monday to Friday um, for term times and then one day a week during school holidays but it runs throughout the year um, whereas the cricket and bowls just run from April to October so um, I'm, I was trying to think back to the full history when these sort of prices were actually set um, and I think that's the reasoning behind it so what you're saying is in terms of money per week, it's yeah, not so unreasonable. No, well, no. I, 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 yeah. It's not clear, is it? And, and it is heavily subsidised. Yeah, no, they, they, well, they're designed to it, aren't they? I mean, these are children, aren't they? Do we charge our youths to use the skateboard? <laughs> no, of course you don't. Um, you don't charge them anything. So, you know, it's open space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So why do we uh, charge such large amounts um, on use the uniform? Should say. Well, it's that's the decision. So yeah. we we right. as officers merely implement it. Yeah. Well, I would reduce that by. Uh, well, well, can I have a proposal then? I propose that we reduce the scales. Uh, to what figure, Roger? Five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. So have a second or anywhere? Well, then accepting what I've asked for. I know, Ben, not, ben yeah. proposed sorry. accepting this uh, as it is for the top three. Oh, right, sorry, sorry, Ben, I beg your pardon. I, I, I'm happy to second that, Ben, if no one else has said. So uh, that's two things on the on the table, so to speak. Ben has proposed and I've seconded that we go with the figures on the top third of the uh, sheet. Can I put that to the vote, please, those in favour? That's uh, Andy, Fab, oh. I think that's it, four. Those against? John? Roger. And Roger. Two against. And abstentions? Tom's playing the uh, comment he wants to abstain. I'm sorry? Tom's abstaining. Tom's abstaining. Terry's abstaining, I think, are you, Terry? Yes, yeah, Franklin abstained. And myself too, yeah. <coughs> Tony, totally sorry, Tony, could you? Uh, abstaining. Right, so that's four in favour, two against, and four abstentions. Right. Oh, that carries that one then. So we're now left with uh, Bradley Stone Radio. Can we defer this and uh, wait for more information? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Can I just ask Sharon, you said uh, they were applying for a uh, grant paid in December and sent them in their account. They, well, they, as part of applying for community development grant aid, they have to supply their most recent set of accounts, so yes, they will be. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering then, as this lease is different to the others, and they lodged that in December each year, did they? Um, yeah, they applied last year and then they used the money during the year. It just so happens that, that, that yeah, it's just coming up to, they, they used all their money, I think, in, like, that we'd given them in September, because obviously they report back to each Leisure Youth and Immunities meeting of how they spent the funding that we've given them. So they will be applying in December for, like, the next sort of funding. Because it would make sense then for each year for this lease to be reviewed after they've applied for their funding and given their report at leisure year and the minute and then it's paper to finance. Would it it'd have to go to because there's only like two days between leisure years and finance. So perhaps it would need to go to bowls would need to go to January for council. Or perhaps we need to have slightly different uh, length of time between the two committees. <laughs> go to January for council. No, <laughs> <laughs> Very not not I don't. Have they definitely applied for money this year? They are going to be, yeah, because I've sent the I sent them the application form and they know it needs to be back by the first of December. So yeah. I, I didn't I thought that they got some funding from COVID. I didn't 
in there that was I don't know on that, so yeah. Well I mean you could defer a decision on Radio State Radio lease until January full counts and then buy then etc. That yeah. seems to make yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Proposal is that we defer Bradley State Radio until the next, until the uh, first uh, council of the new year. There's a second that There's a, that, uh, that's Roger and Ben. Anyone um, wish to vote in favour of that? Tony, do you want to come in? Uh, vote in favour. Not in favour. Right. I think it's uh, everybody's in favour. I think. I'm not sure about Tom. I don't know, it's got a very nice picture of a park. Yes, that's staying in the lease review for that one, I think, isn't it? Right. Well, it's him standing in front of the tree. I thought it was a sort of step going up. Oh, sorry, who is that? So, sorry, can you just do that again for in favour of, of, of deferring a decision on radio until January for right. council? Again, please, for everybody, I think, yes, I get every hand is up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, not sure Tom, I'm No, I don't think Tom's there anymore. Okay. Are you there, Tom? No answer, but it's still in reply. Yes, I am there. Yeah. says, I wish to abstain from voting on the annual lease review on agenda item 12.3, so... Yeah, that was the first one I think. So we haven't yeah, but yeah, it's now two, so right. Uh, okay. First budget draw. Twelve four. Alright, um uh, you've got a written report and also um copies of the five year forward plan, so um a full mid-year review was done at October Finance uh, with a, uh, quite a few budget changes uh, made at that point. Um, and the, so this is the first budget draft, um, so we'll be going through December um, and then January for the final agreement. Um, in the report for the current year, so we just um, where I've been out for a while and, uh, you know, it's sort of not up to speed with absolutely everything and um, just reallocating where, where some things have been credited within the accounts and sort of changing it. Things have slipped off a little bit. So, um, but I've itemised in this report um, uh, budget um, uh, to be sort of changed for the current year, first of all. So, um, after getting the the interest rates and up to date information on the current investments that we've just talked about. Um, in June, we did actually scale back the budget substantially uh, to 5,700 uh, because we thought then, um, the investments would be actually impacted a lot more. Uh, but based on the information that we have now, um, it, it makes sense to uh, put it up to 7. 7,000, so restoring it closer to the level that it was previously in June, when I think it was 6,800. Um, and then on the expenditure side, uh, reports and publications, uh, we uh, no longer uh, buy these in the post, so we don't need that budget. Um, uh, computer hardware on all sides. Um, we have scaled that back initially uh, to 1200, uh, but I have had to sort of move um, some of the purchases around within the account, so we need to restore that back to 2150. Um, but bearing in mind that equipment we bought for sort of home working and, and things along those lines, um, I don't think that's too bad at all. Uh, street furniture, uh, we have 3500 in. Um, so it's just scaling it back to uh, 2,500 um, and we have got sort of funds held in reserve. Um, so that's, that's for the current um, sort of uh, budget. So I don't know if you want to agree that now or discuss that and then we'll move on to next year's first budget draft. 
I think we should go with the uh, option one. It seems to be the only one that makes sense to me. Well, that, that, that's later on. This, this is just the budget for, uh, for the current year and the written report at the moment. Okay. I'm happy to propose that, Rachel. Yeah, I just think it might be easier doing it year by year. That's, this is the 20... This is the current year. The, the, a, final few, a final few changes linked to yeah. the FDM. Okay, so that's proposed by Ben. Seconded by Andy. Thank you. Did you vote on that one, please? Those in favour? Aye. Tom's up, Terry's up, Franklin's up, Fab's up, and the second Tony? John is up. I think everybody's in is up. Tony is. Tony's finished. There's a world shortage of Tony's. Yeah. Right, please carry on, Rachel. Yeah. Right, so then moving into next year, um, I thought the easiest thing to do, I mean, all of these budget changes have been incorporated within the forward plan, and, and Roger will come on to the different options towards the end. Um, so all these, I have incorporated all these budget changes within the full plan already, and I thought that the best way to show it was um, the um, the current budget, which is in the first column for 2021, and then the proposed budget for next year and the reasoning behind it. So the first one is the bank and investment team term, and as we discussed, we're expecting some dismal returns on our investment, so um, reducing that to 5,000 within the forward plan. Um, and then on the expenditure side, um, advertising and publishing, um, the current budget 2420, um, uh, but increasing it next year to 3150, uh, because it was reduced this year because we didn't have to do, uh, we didn't need flyers for the um, community festival and fireworks, so it's just reinstating the, the budget again. And this is happening on quite a few of these. Um, health and safety, uh, we did have that one this year, 3750 for COVID. Um, at the time that I wrote this, I hadn't heard about all the vaccines coming through, so we might not need this budget, but um, um, increasing it to 5,400 if it's required, obviously budget we don't just spend budgets because they're there. Uh, computer support, uh, we have 8,500 in and reducing it to 8,000. Um, that's because we, um, where we're on the clouds now, we don't need uh, two of the servers that had quite hefty warranties against them. Uh, street maintenance, 16,240. Uh, currently increasing it to 18,240. Um, that's based upon the three-year fixed price contract that was agreed in uh, March and also the introduction of the roundabout enhancement. And I would like to add that um, the street maintenance was reduced um, in the current year when we were scaling back up with all the budgets in, um, in June. So uh, um, I think originally it was near 18 anyway. Uh, professional fees. Uh, well, just going back one, does roundabout enhancements include uh, Little calf and dog? No, it's only two main. And actually, there isn't that. That will, we will be relooking at that um, that contract in the spring because right. it's not obviously it's done for the year. So right. I miss them. <laughs> Do you want me to up the budget then? <laughs> We don't suit you best. We bought yes, them. I know we bought them. They will, I, hopefully, they will soon make the reemergence a bit more securely right. on that roundabout. Right. Uh, professional fees. Uh, this is the one where uh, the contracts are covering in my absence. Um, um, will not be there, obviously, but in the next financial year. Um, so 
reducing that down to 2,000. Um, insurance, uh, currently we're at 14,000. Uh, that would scale back up a bit linked to actual expenditures. Uh, increasing it to 15,000 because we're always certainly going to have an increase. And we're going to have possibly the new baby to help play area, uh, and that would be much might increase um, uh, uh, the insurance values as well. Uh, fireworks is playing, keeping that back to the original budget, so it's um, around about 8,100, and again it was slashed this year. Um, and um, Council agreed that the budget of 3147 was to pay for the most charity, so we've had to do that successfully this year. Uh, together with the Community Festival, uh, that's just restoring that back to its original level that Council had agreed in September, um, last, uh, September 19, uh, going forward for our um, event managers uh, to, to run that. But additional costs um, like the safety barriers and the few other bits and pieces. Um, the youth core spending, um, I've split it. Um, what I would say is that the, the youth spending has stayed stable so going to, and is stable going through the five year forward plan so that um, any increased expenditures um, um, at this stage we would hope to try and get external spending sort of to, to cover. So, but at the same time, now that the skate park development and the shipping containers are in situ and we're getting more contracts linked directly to the, um, the skate park, this was something that I was hoping to do before I, I was unfortunately out. So I pieced together uh, prices that we have that are sort of day-to-day and annual rolling costs. Um, so far, it's not all of them by any means, probably. Um, for the state park uh, general rolling costs, and I've itemised all the different things that it covers, like the licences, um, water and electricity, um, uh, uh, emptying the bin at weekend cleaning, you know, sort of the general sort of day to day running. And I've separated that out of the core funding. So the 5500 and 5600, which is the new post um, that will be developed just for the state park, so that council can see the actual expenditures that that um, provision is, is costing. I've separated that out and basically I've, I've, I've just taken the current year's budget uh, and the same budget that was already in the five year forward plan and just separated it off to. Uh, between the state park and for funding. Um, the Jubilee Centre Electricity, I did this before, uh, a report that's going to come later on in, in the meeting. Um, it was already in the uh, forward plan, a 10% increase um, across all the gas and electricity budgets for um, the three sites. Um, general waste, for the, um, the Jubilee Centre has been increased £600. Pounds. Um, that's just based on sort of last year's year-end figures. Um, and hygiene waste just a sign of 3% increase. Um, Jubilee Centre Fire and secure, uh, Security, we have, slashed the, we have slashed the budget this year because the sites were closed. So basically it's restoring it back up uh, for next year. Uh, also, it's general supplies. Um, um, we had put a bit more in there uh, because at the time that this was born up, we were thinking COVID, um, you know, sort of, uh, we're going to have that extra sort of hand wash people are going to wash their hands more, probably use more sort of hand towels and this, that and the other. So um, we had increased the estimated um, all site supplies per month um, to 340. If we don't need it, it's not sent. Uh, Chair, uh, or acting chair. Um, yes, please, Tony. With the savings that we're making, will that be possibly a small saving on uh, getting our supplies now from the wholesaler as opposed to from the cleaning company? There's a little saving there as far as your um, supplies are concerned. Yeah, I, I think that. Um, and the other, the other 
There's a, there's a thought there which you mentioned because uh, a certain site has been closed, therefore we haven't made a saving. Um, the actual uh, youth hub at the skate park is closed. Um, so I guess you're not really be neatly cleaning there and things like that. No, that was just, this was just for the fire and security. I mean, if the cleaning didn't go in, we wouldn't you be You mentioned uh, cleaning there the particular sites? No, I, I was just going through the Jubilee Centre at, at, at this point. Um, but, but you mentioned, you did mention the... Yeah, Jubilee Centre. Um, well, we were talking about this being near you, weren't we? You said something within the youth budget here. Oh, yeah, in the case of more running costs. Yeah. 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 What I'm saying is yeah. because it's closed, it's not open, which I find quite uh, strange really that, you know, we, we still say that the skate park open under Rossiter rules and the new COVID rules, although people aren't social distancing on the site, as I've gone past many times, then they're not. Um, the, I think, well, why is that has not open? It will be. One, it's going to reopen after December the 2nd, one day a week. That's what we're planning to reopen. However, then the next lockdown came in, and as I reported to you previously, the red tier that we're operating from at the moment is filled in by work as in by only, as we look at the girls' project. I also mentioned before that, I mean, you talked about 40 to 50 people, I believe it was, using the skate park. Um, and if that's it, any one particular time, then they're not social distancing. Because they're not anyway, because they're, I've gone through it many times and they're not. And they're, there's no marketing of it or. Yeah. I, had an e I had an email today which I'm quite happy to dig up from the local police. Uh, I've been reviewing CCT footage and visiting, and the police uh, confirmed in our copy chat into this that they thought the skate park has been used really well during this period in a positive way. Yes, we when we are there, we remind people that perhaps <laughs> that are too close, but it's. <laughs> Um, all we can get about the evidence in front of our eyes and the evidence in front of the eyes of the report from the police is that it's well used at this moment in time and in terms of well, security, it's for most of the time well respected. Uh, uh, I'm sorry Graham, uh, you may have an email from the police and if you can tell me how many times that they've gone past it and noted these things. And I say, and, uh, and I do I, Graham, could please finish? I go past that skate park on a regular basis, if not once or maybe twice a day, and I'm telling you now, every time I've gone past it, the skateboarders are not social distancing. That's my point. What are you suggesting, David? Well, it might be worthwhile, you know, with perhaps you know, uh, your your um, input with the youth to perhaps have a little word now and again, engage as you call it. Graham does regularly speak to young people and families and yeah. and advise them. Us, Karen, us. Karen, with all due respect, when did you last go to the skate park? I I haven't been to the skate park. I'm just. Passing on what Graham reports to me, and he does review the CCTV out there. And copy the responses with the police. So yes, I'm just. I'm, I'm not saying I go up there regularly. Have you not broken the data protection rules by monitoring the CCTV? Uh, my understanding is no, because on, I'm I'm now on the policy to review CCTV. We're in a COVID pandemic situation, and all we're doing is fast forwarding it to get a general picture of usage. From a health and safety, sure, from a health and safety perspective, to make sure it is. Can you now? 
We're not supposed to be discussing uh, skateboard parks at the moment. We're looking at the budget, and uh, I'd rather be concentrated on that. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on in that case, Mike. Right. Okay. Rachel? Well, we're talking about uh, page three. I mean, um, the items on page four are fair and fully explained because I'm just um, um, wary of, of the time that we're hitting. Um, so these are the major changes that have been fed into the five year board plan. So if, if, if anyone's got any questions sort of linked to those that haven't already been asked, then um, um, otherwise um, you, you can sort of consider them for approval. And then we'll move on to the five year board plan. I mean, this is the first draft, and um, so um, we will have uh, um, discussions at December and January as well as we proceed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to move on to the um, four options at the top of page five now? You need to approve the unit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, to approve these budgets that I've highlighted, the larger ones. So in the middle of page four. Well, yeah. no, we've looked at all the, the budgets no, from page, page two, three. page three, and then halfway yes, down. Yes, but the one. decision looks to be in the middle of page four. Yeah. Right. Can we Can we agree that then, please? Yes. 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 I think Tom said. Um, ben. Did John come up second it? I'm not sure. I, I yes, think he did. I, yeah, Tom, so Tom proposed and John Ash seconded. Can you take a vote well, on that please? Those in favour, please. Tom, Fab, Andy, uh, John, of course. Rogers of Stone, is it? Six. Eight in favour. Roger abstaining. Tony. Abstaining. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So that's carried. Right. And now do we move on to the options on page five? Yeah. Uh, well, um, it, it's just to explain the the tax base for those people that haven't. Um, been involved with uh, sort of the budgets and things before and actually understand how they work. So the forward plan that you have got, uh, which is um, the third budget draft option one um, here, uh, the, the forward plan uh, is currently based upon an indicative tax base. Now it was published by South Gloss in December 19. We've applied a 10% reduction, which uh, Council had requested uh, sort of earlier in the year, um, uh, around about June time, so that's been applied, and a 5% reduction has, has been applied to their predictions going over the next five year period. Now these, uh, they are just predictions, they're not firm, uh, but we've got to have something upon which to base our initial after the budget draft. The actual figures um, won't be available until December, and I think Sharon, you said they were hoping to get them out early December. Yeah, that's what they said at the most recent Parish and Town Council Forum. Yeah, they were aimed for beginning of December. So, I mean, basically, um, that's going to be the number of households and the properties upon which we will be able to take, uh, take our the preset level that we set. So. If those figures change drastically, we're, it's going to impact quite severely in the when we discuss um, discuss the budget in December. But until we get those figures through, we, we've no idea, uh, you know, sort of whether a ten percent reduction is sufficient. Um, but um, uh, as well as that, um, earlier in the year we flashed the higher income. So uh, we discussed this um, at October uh, Finance as well, that I'd put forward uh, different options 
linked to the higher charges uh, because the, uh, the current levels are really, really low. Because, um, you know, the, the hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, this is going to be the year that we're most impacted and um, losing that income from our site. So basically, um, we've got four options. So option one is um, an estimate uh, if we uh, if we apply the higher charge income that we would have used in our forward plan had we not reduced it this year for COVID. Um, and that produces over, uh, at the end of the year, um, a £13,600 profit. But obviously, it doesn't allow for um, any additional surplus year end reserves, which um, I am expecting, but it's impossible to calculate those at the moment. Um, option two um, is to maintain the existing power income that was introduced for this year, and that, reduce, uh, that produces a 67,000 shortfall. Um, at the end of this year, and obviously, as things go over the five-year term, it, it accumulates an impact. Um, or option three, uh, to reduce by uh, 50 percent, um, in which case there's a, this is a 53,000 pound loss at, at uh, the end of um, the, um, the year. Or option four, uh, reduce the budget by 25 percent. Uh, which produces um, uh, a year-end loss of 19, uh, 19 or 19 thousand. So, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it, it, in the period of time between me drawing these up, all the vaccine, um, you know, sort of. Um, opportunities that have been reported which could change things drastically and we, we might well find that come come um first of april um you know the vaccines have been out there and our our sites can open uh, you know pretty much as normal we, we just don't know what we're dealing with so it's something for council to seriously consider on this first budget draft and maybe as more news comes out we we adjust it going forward but you've got those four options in front of you and i think what you you were saying option one well it's uh, the title of this is higher income not higher losses uh, and the only one that first gives us an income is option one but you say um it might affect the number of bookings because the fees are slightly higher. I don't agree. I think people will either book it or not, depending on the COVID situation and uh, their situation themselves. So I don't I'm, not sure. I'm not understanding you. You're saying my, it, this isn't an uh, increase in the higher charges. This no, 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 no. It's a, a higher budget. Maintaining it. Yeah, maintaining it. Yeah, it's maintaining it. But that's the only one that gives us uh, an income, isn't it? But at the same time, the council has to consider um, realistic predictions. Yeah, I think that's difficult, isn't it? Because um, you know, if they're not linked to higher charges, no, they're the budgets or the higher income on our sites. Yeah. 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 And some of those other options in two and three. But if you're assuming that the current situation doesn't improve, um, so you continue by this year, you end up with a negative of 60, uh, 67,000. That's not because we've reduced the income, that's because we're anticipating reduced income. Yeah. So this is about anticipating. Option one wouldn't be a good option to select because that would be anticipating business as usual, yeah, exactly, yeah. where we should be looking at one of those lesser options which look more negative because then we're anticipating actually everybody will still inside a pandemic and we don't know what the first mm -hmm. phase is going to bring. So in some ways, option, I, don't, I don't necessarily think option two is properly correct because it's all just um, wet thing with the air litmus test type it, 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 but, but um, you know, sort of the, 
to see the public document to make sure to show to the public that council has considered, you know, the situation. And, and at the same time, like I, I said, if, if all the sites open up um, in the next quarter, then our expenditures against those sites are going to be higher. Um, but our income will be higher again. Um, if they don't open, then our expenditures should be less. In which case, we'll have a higher year-end surplus. As far as it's predicted, so we haven't just got to accept, you know, once and for all, have we? And won't can't we sort of iterate as as we go along and have more, you know, actual situation? Can't we adjust? How how the, how this works? So um, this is the third draft, and we go through three drafts. So uh, December finance. And we uh, uh, do the second draft, um, or to direct, you know, what they'd like to change. January, a budget has to be set because we then have to apply to South Gloucestershire Council and tell them what the fee set will be for our oh, yeah. community, and that has to be lodged um, in 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 January, generally early February, but I suspect with the way things are, they're going to want it in January so that it gives them time to recalculate. My experience has always been wanted by the end of January. So, I mean, that's for us to get the, the preset, but, you know, the, um, the five-year forward plan, it is a projection, but this is just for the budget next year. But okay. we have got these three chances to set it, and, and that's it. Um, because once once that's agreed, the precepts will be set. Council can make changes to the uh, budget after that time, but it won't change the precept that we're going to get for that for next year. That has to be agreed in at the January council meeting at the latest. So I'm just setting my mind out there. So from my mind, we don't have any news at the moment that currently projects that we will be in a better position come next year, other than rumour mill about what's happening with various different news stories externally. So I would propose we stick with option two for now, what? and drafting that we're going to mean that we'll end up with this income on budget. So we're not aiming for the stars, we're trying to then rein ourselves in a bit. You're happy to make a loss, are you? No, no, I'm not happy to make a loss. I'm happy to say that I don't expect the income from those three activity centres to return to pre-COVID levels with option one. And that we should be assuming that we're going to maintain the current level of income from the sites based on the current circumstances. I don't think, I don't think it will cost, uh, whether something's £20 dearer is going to affect anyone's um, need to book something, I think. Uh, but we might not even be open, we not, might not, you know, it's it, it, not exactly yeah. Right. It, it, it's, it's not cost of the high charge, it's exactly that, Terry. It's, will our sites be open, or will our sites be open and more than six can congregate for when, or social distancing, which stops the government coming in? Exactly. Yeah. Andy, Andy and then Terry. I think being realistic, I think Ben's right. I think it's worst case scenario, and I, I would second option two. And on a note of uh, going back to our standing orders, it's half past ten. If I remember rightly, don't we have to vote to extend? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, I propose we extend. Second. To eleven o'clock. Yeah, no later. No later than eleven. Right, and then yeah, so proposed by Mike. Seconded by sorry, Mr. Podger. Yeah. That's to extend to eleven. Yes. Maximum. Jerry. Yes. Yeah, sorry, can you just take a vote on that one? Oh sorry, very hard. Try and get everything done that we've got here. Uh yeah. Yeah, I think that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so He's in San Francisco. Yeah. No, he's in Southern British. Right, moving on. Sorry. Um, 
Uh, we've had a motion from Ben, seconded by Andy, that we go with option two. Uh, we've had a totally different view expressed by Roger. Um, but can I uh, ask if everyone, anyone has any different views about going for one, three, or four? Or shall I put option two to the vote? I think three, I think three would be better, don't you? Because it's more realistic. Do we have to vote on this now, Rachel? Right. Rachel, do you want a decision on this now? Yeah, just just put it first drop. That doesn't mean that can yeah, that's first drop. Yeah, that's a first drop. Yeah, I'm not really into vote on it. This first drop, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, just give guidance. Yeah, give guidance. Yeah, that's giving guidance. Right. So yeah. if, you, if you vote on option two now, and then in yeah. December things yeah. Yeah, things out, yeah. 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 Change, you can well... Can I do option two to the vote then? I've got a proposal from Ben, seconding by Andy, and those in favour, please. Please to show. Uh, I think uh, Tony and yeah. Fab yeah. and Franklin yeah. and Terry. Aye. On the basis of the change it later. Yes, yes. Yeah. Six. Okay. That's six in the favour. Okay. Okay. Then. Okay. Then. 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 On my bill to the trees in the book way. Oh. Dell? Dell, you're our tree lady. Yeah, no, no, I'm not a tree lady. Um, yeah. Um, residents have highlighted issues um, that are of great concern at your book website. These trees are within your area. Uh, my professional opinion and my experience would be to sell all these trees. Um, you could, I don't know, you don't have a tree policy. However, I do yeah. think that if you do sell these trees, you might want to um, suggest that other trees are planted um, when these are removed. But there are considerable problems with these trees. They're on a footpath, they're overlooking um, a football pitch, they're on the area that the scouts play. I know a lot of residents would be very upset with the removal of these trees because when I turned up there was a lot of interest as to why I was looking at the trees. But I was trying to, from experience, point out to the local residents that if they were walking their dog and this little tree just decided to drop, it, it, it would be a bit of a worry for me. I didn't Are you saying this is a health and safety issue? Yes. Yes, I've read it past Vicky and she suggested because of the amount of money that is involved, we really should be looking at removing these trees. Um, we have, for example, say, sorry, I'm, I've got so many trees to worry about. Um, nine of them are just kind of like, I just need to refresh. The first one that is in the picture, it's a pretty cool picture, uh, it's overhanging a footpath. This tree is extremely high. If it actually falls down, there are probably three options of where it could fall down. One would be a footpath, or the two footpaths it could fall upon. One would be a football pitch, and the other would be on the scout, um, as in where they practice and perform their physical activities. Um, there are five ash, uh, sorry, ash trees, elm trees, sorry, within that parameter as well that are deceased. They're not a massively huge issue, but they do need to be removed because they could fall on somebody and hurt them. You have another ash tree. There is um, a particular tree that has had some work done to it, but it's had a stem removed and it has a priority and uh, a top heavy area and that's a real concern from experience and I've, I've over stressing this I don't want to sort of frighten the council but I've had two trees that have fallen down on a, on a public highway. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Go on mute. Go on mute, Dan. I'm on mute, that's fine. Um, I feel that um, I have been in a situation where I've had two quite large oak trees fall. They've had TPOs on them. These trees don't have uh, tree strike, TPO tree preservation orders. Um, Can I suggest, because the time is running out, Del, we go with your recommendation yes. to fell and also your recommendation that raised garden services being the cheapest yes. in the option we take up. Yes. I've got that. What did you say? Yeah. 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 Um, the particular tree that has a cavity in it, the cavity is actually in the base of the tree and it's, um, it's over 50% cavity, which is something that, considering volume and the size of the tree, would be a massive concern. I'm not a tree surgeon, I have another profession, but from my experience, um, I, I appreciate the input that you're giving me, but this particular tree is a massive concern. This is the one that concerns me the way it has decay at the bottom um, and as you can see there is um, a picture of growth at the bottom. That means the tree is dead in the lower area. If it was higher up I, I this, that wouldn't be a problem but where this cavity is it is a huge concern. Sure. Sure. Well, I move acceptance and going with the middle one. Sorry someone coming in? It's not here. Hi. I just mentioned, you know, as the office already mentioned, and uh, in terms of state health and safety, I think we need to move and uh, take the office of recommendation and do it. Uh, Thank you. Second in my recommendation then. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I put that to the vote. Andy says. Sorry. Andy. Sorry. Just going back to what Roger was saying about would it not be worth having an arboriculturalist just to come over and give us an expert opinion on these trees? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. These are these are people who deal. They are tree surgeons. Um. And yes, we have had that report done. These trees at the time that the report was done, they did highlight issues within the tree. There is a tree report survey that I have. Um. That I've inherited. I haven't had time to look at it because these trees were highlighted to me for the noise, the creaking, the height of them, um, and, the, and, and, and yes, no, they have been looked at and they are of concern um, to the report that you paid for. I think it was in 2018 or 2019. Yeah, I mean, if there is a health and safety yeah. uh, aspect of this, ought we not to move fairly soon? Yeah, yeah, I agree with Andy. I think you know, would we, would it not be better to get an up to date report? Um, because we've also got to think about the people who are complaining about uh, removal of the trees because there are, you know, it does sort of uh, excite some people, and uh, and we've got to be shown that we've done all of the necessary due diligence to make sure that, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can I just say, you have to have this report and survey done. You have been absolutely meticulous. I have come from somewhere that's not had one done for 30 years and they've had bigger, worse trees than this. And, and you have done these reports. They haven't been acted upon because actually at that time the trees were not in this condition. These trees, for whatever reason, whether it's been something to do with the climate change, they've suddenly developed these issues that residents have noticed and from from as an officer recommendation with experience i would recommend that you you get some of this work done and i have suggested to senior officers that we look at in or getting a tree management policy um in place that can help officers deal with these issues as they happen rather than come so back to the that yeah. sounds a very good idea i'm worried that the people who are going for today are going to be happy if it's falls on someone and kills their little dog. Oh, well, yeah. then. Well, can we walk? Uh, uh, splendid. Uh, well, in just for time. 
Yeah, yeah. We'll look at the vote, please. We've got, time is running out. I, I have made a proposal, and Tom has seconded it. So, uh, those in favour of following the op officer's recommendation of moving ahead with the felling, please show. One, two, Three, four. Five. Five. In favour. Against. One. And Terry. Five against. Five in favour. Five against. Well, I'm afraid I've got the casting vote, and I think there's a health and safety aspect here, and I think we've got to move ahead. Uh, with the uh, with the felling, um, I will make two provisos. I think we ought to uh, ask the officers to look at what trees to replace them at there, and I also think we ought to ask the officers to um, look at coming up with a policy uh, on uh, as suggested by Dell. Is that agreed by everybody? Yeah. Going to come. Yeah. yeah. Hey, contrary. And, and is that going to confirm uh, which subject, please? Do you want that song? Well, sir. Uh, I recommended 7041. 7041. Which yeah. is, is the building budget, which then leads down to money, if I mentioned it. I'm happy with either of those two votes. Yeah, thank you. None of them are going to make Thank you. Can we now look at Bailey's Court uh, manhole covers? I've been all over it myself, so I have a great deal of sympathy with this one. <coughs> I think for the sake of um, uh, phrasing, I think we should call these inspection chambers. As well as the man Quite happy with that. Oh yeah, I guess manhole covers is yes. politically correct. No, it's it's from the first of all, first of all covers. Inspection chambers. Inspection I had an MP when I lived in Brunet called Sidney Chapman who said in these days of political correctness was going to change his name to Sidney Person Person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, can we, uh, sorry, wasting time. Can we move on to looking at these, this proposal? Um, we've got the money in the maintenance budget and it looks as a recommendation should be that we go ahead and there's the um, Bristol Handyman 1848 plus VAT. Uh, it's not the cheapest, but it looks to be the best. It's actually, there's, there's two to do. Oh. Isn't it? That? Yeah. Mark it for you, James. I've got two different quotes. Yeah. Oh, that's very yeah. 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 Yeah, A very clear, comprehensive specification. Um, as much as I'm a certain way, I'm quite specific with my specifications and they have come back with two quotes that are quite misleading, um, yeah. which worries me because obviously if you say to somebody I'm going to cut some trees on an area, I want to know how many trees someone's cutting because they could cut more than two trees and we've agreed to a certain amount of money. So. Um, I don't know any of these companies, I've not used them before, I've gone with um, local uh, staff who suggested these people have done work for the council before and uh, obviously the quotes are there, so I'm just sort of suggesting that this work does need to be done. Um, as you can see, the, the area is quite raised, the block paving or sorry, the patio slabs are quite wonky. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with the yeah. edge. Yeah. Yes, sorry, going in? Tom. Yeah. Because the other one saying that we will remove the beach to the beach and while it's a clear chicken. So uh, is it compatible uh the three two compounds? Sorry, sorry, Tom, but my hang on, let me turn my volume up. I don't know. Oh, sorry, it may be my trouble. Uh, no, 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 oh, sorry. <clears throat> is the Tom Harris and Pierre James um, both equally identical records? Why are you proposing, Tom? 
but he was the other one, they say they will remove the EV and they will put power on the field. Right? Uh, will PA change be the remote to do that? Is that back again? Which one are you proposing, Tom? PA James Limited. Check for PA James. Those in favour? What's wrong to pick up? Do you need a seconder? Um, yeah, Tom, what's your second day? I think, I think Andy wants to speak. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Sorry. Yeah, okay. I'd like to just say, if you look at Tom Harris' point, he actually is looking to do a proper job where he's going to remove the manhole and reduce the actual level to make it fit all properly. Whereas PA James is just looking to replace the uneven slabs. So you're probably going to end up with exactly the same situation further down the line of PA James. Whereas if you look at Tom Harris, not only are they removing the slabs, etc., but they're proposing to lower the manhole to the suitable level so that it's not going to happen again in the future. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That, that is a question I asked. That was a question I asked. Though. Oh, you couldn't hear you very well. Sorry, Tom, there's, there's, there's feedback. There's, I don't know if Rachel's the same. And everyone, I'm very difficult to hear. It's not you. It's just very, very quiet. But We're having problems with the video camera here. It's just suddenly decided to stop working. I think oh, yeah. three hours is probably it. So is mine. Hang on a minute. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's um, <laughs> yeah, that old chestnut. Um, but from my perspective, I like to be transparent and I do look at Tom Harris and I think that the fact that he specified my specification when I put out for a, a job to be done is quite clear. So I give them a specification and I like to meditate my interpretation and for the councils inside on their specification it's quite important because it needs to be clear and transparent when you're spending that money to get that work carried out in accordance to how you want it completed. Yeah, that's what we all What's your recommendation, Del? My recommendation, according to the specification that I've given out and received back, would be Tom Harris. I don't know this um, company, but the fact that he's removing this particular area, they've specified the area of unsafe, uh, unsafe slabs around the manhole, sorry, excuse the pardon, the visual inspection area. Um, mm -hmm to remove the slabs, to lower that area to a suitable level, because my brain can't work it out and compile it, and then supply all the materials required and remove the waste. So even though they are a little bit more than the other one, the fact that they specify clearly what they're going to do means that you will be making a good decision looking at that quotation. And if they don't, then in writing I have that to then pull them up and say, you've not carried out the work up to your specification. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, that's I don't propose that we use uh, this guy Harris. Yeah, I think uh, that. Yeah. I'll second that. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that was, so that was Tony what? and who seconded? Michael. Michael. Yeah. So can you take right. a vote? Right. Those in favour, please, of going with Tom Harris. Yeah. Unanimous in no. the room. Yeah. Unanimous, I think, on that. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Right, we have 11 minutes. Uh, telephone and broadband quotes. Uh, uh, talk to that one? No, this is um, Rachel. Rachel? Um, right, we, our telephone um, line and broadband uh, is due to expand the 3rd of December. Um, we had new phones in 2018, uh, so we're tied into um, a maintenance contract, uh, 75 per, uh, quarter, uh, that runs to the 30th of April 2023, and if we leave that now to go with someone else, there'll be a £750 exit charge, that's just to uh, give some background. At the time when this was set up, um, council was um, thinking ahead um, and knowing that like the old telephone lines, the ISDN lines, the digital lines that we currently use, 
uh, were going to be phased out over three years. So um, the plan was that council would look to uh, go on to phones using the cloud. Um, so basically, just uh, sort of whizzing through this, uh, there are a couple of options. Uh, so uh, there are our existing um, uh, phone provider um, to provide um, uh, quotes if we remain uh, um, with our existing um, old-style telephone lines. Uh, um, and at the bottom of page one, you can see their current rates. Um, a two-year contract, three-year contract, or five-year contract, and uh, an out-of-contract uh, rate. Um, so if council did decide to sort of, uh, stay with that existing sort of phone line, um, it, it would make sense to do it uh, for the three-year period. Uh, uh, that would tally with our maintenance contract on the phones, and it wouldn't be a large uplift on our current our current contract, but at the same time, option two is to upgrade to uh, cloud um, phones um, um, on the cloud. Um, so we had quotes in from mainstream who are our existing supplier, and for that um, it would be a one-off charge of £877, and then a quarterly charge of £546.82. Uh, we are Dianet who provide all Tony. Sorry. Ask questions. Tony. 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 Yeah, but this is sort of the off the office and side phones. So okay. back in 2018, this was this was council's plan, and I've attached the the minutes from when it was uh, was agreed. So it was uh, once the current contract ends, uh, we'll be in a good good position to switch from standard phone lines to the cloud which will make us considerable savings each month on lines and calls. Uh, in 2025, phone lines will no longer be supported. What, what's the advantage of having a telephone? <coughs> I, I, think it, I think it's a sort of cost. Long run. And, and, and the, the old star landline are not going to be supported in the future according to all the information that's been provided. And that was known back in 2018. So this is merely carrying out um, where our contract's coming to an end, carrying out uh, the wishes that council put in place back in 2018. We, we put these in place from the recommendations of what comes out from the officers. So don't keep blaming it on it's the council that has done this. Um, my, my, my question is, what, why, why do we need to go to a cloud phone or a cloud system? To save as money opposed to long term. Ammo. Sorry, it's to... For, for a pre predicted money Sorry, saving. Predicted money saving longer term. So, yeah. um... At the bottom, you can say, so it's either we, we carry on with the current position. I mean, we haven't got to switch to the cloud. There are options there. Um, no. Or... Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to find out what, what, what the advantages are to go to, to the dual cloud system. Um, if if it's, it will save money on it, then, then I think we should be looking at it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, if, if you have a look at rec the recommendations at the bottom, uh, uh, at the end, um, I've yeah. summarised it there. Um, yeah. So we can continue with the current position, which is in the region of six hundred and fifty nine pounds sixty per quarter, or we could upgrade to sort of cloud phones. So we have an up cost up front cost of eight hundred and seventy seven pounds, but then that there's an estimated saving of seven eight pounds per quarter. Which equates equate to nine hundred and thirty nine pounds thirty six over the three year period. 
So it, it, in the long run, it's cheaper, and it, it all comes down to whether the the old existing phone lines are going to remain supported. Yeah. As we only have four minutes left before we have to close, do I take it that your recommendation is that we go with option 2A, Rachel? I, 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 it's either. I mean, um, we we have looked at sort of the cloud because that, that's what we've been the minute from uh, previously. Um, it, it's the cheap, with all the information provided at the moment, it's the cheaper option. Um, ben has whispered in my ear that he is proposing option 2A, and then I'm happy to second that. Those in favour, option please? 2A. Yes. So 2A at the top. Yes, there. 2A at the top. Yeah, option 2A. Those so the one-off charge, and then the, the recommendation of the upgrade. Which is option 2A. Yeah. So okay. as detailed in recommendation B. Yeah. So option 2A, recommendation B. Yeah. yeah. And that was proposed by Ben in second year. No, it's recommendation A, isn't it? Mainstream. Yeah. 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 It's the way it's the oh, yeah. so yeah. yeah. recommendation B at the bottom. Oh, I see. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Right. Those in favour, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three in the room. And the fab. John trying to hide his face. Franklin. Yeah. Tom, are you happy with that? Um, like nine. Yes, Tom's yeah. Nine in favour. Yes. Attention. Tony, what did you vote for? I voted four. Oh, sorry. So that's oh, unanimous then. Right. Uh, the two that we need to do are, are the, oh. as you, you're coming up to the end, yes. and it's obviously the payment schedule because that's time sensitive, and also to agree a meeting date for 2021. Right, okay. I thought you were, yeah. Both. Because we're Anyone got any queries on the monthly expenditure schedule? No. Oh, I don't know. Tom's proposed what his second is, so we do that. Can you take a vote on that if you're happy with the payment schedule, please? Yeah. Right. And uh Bob, yes, yeah. That's unanimous, thank you very much. And I'm quite happy to propose the council meeting dates for next year. I second that. So thank you very much. All those in favour. All those in favour. <laughs> <laughs> Fab is waiting twice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right. So I don't know about the, the gas and electricity review whether that because that I don't find and it's a real shame because we've got some quotes that have been um, that are being held till Monday, but it can't be held past that day. So basically, I mean, uh, long story short. Our existing um, gas and electricity contracts are due to end um, at the end of October next year. But all the indications at the moment across the board from uh, all the uh, utility brokers and um, everything outside in the market is that the price is going to hike massively because the companies have lost so much money for, for two main reasons during COVID. So they're going to pull their money back. So what uh, brokers are doing for um, um, sort of larger users like ourselves is to secure contracts for, uh, at prices now where they're beneficial that will kick in in November when our uh, November next year when our current contract ends. So that's what I was doing. I think that's a bit time-sensitive one as well. Right, well, we've got to that book. You've got one minute by the timer on that. Yeah. Right, well, let's go by that side. Yeah. If we just interject here, um, th that is your opinion that they have said, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hype. It's absolutely not necessarily. All, all uh, um, gas, electric, oil, etc., is all done by uh, supply and demand. That's how the prices go up. No other reason. 
Well, we pick it, or I pick it from various sources. What they're actually saying is that uh, because they, um, they, the gas and electric was brought in the sun, and because there is sufficient storage in the UK, they had to sell it back at a lot. On top of that, so yes, I, I agree the favour of gas and electricity is, uh, might well be lower, who knows, uh, but the suppliers are, are going to have to get, they're going to add their own premiums on to all of that for that in this year. Oh, I think, yeah, you need to, but you can't discuss this in detail now, I think. Right, okay. Well, then I, I'm proposing to close the meeting and leave the outstanding items be referred to next meeting, Chair? Well, yeah, um, like the, the gas and electricity can go to finance, um, finance the policy, the policy can we go to that. The agenda is going to Item 5, which was missed. Could you skip the agenda? Mm -hmm. Which you were trying to say something? Okay. Item 5, which was missed. Yeah, an instance from the Chair. Did you want to do for that to the next meeting? Oh, you yeah. yeah, uh, were to not know. here at the time, Tony, and I did say there were no yeah. uh, announcements. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wasn't here at the time, hence there was no announcement, but I am here, but, right? And, and so no question, what, what my question was, do you want to defer that to the next meeting? Yes. Or, or do you want a quick announcement? Oh, okay. to the next meeting. By law, you cannot report to Okay, the meeting closed. I'm just making say it, certainly, if there was no announcement from the chair, because I wasn't here. Well, we could start an argument in the energy Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Can I thank uh, officers who have uh, sat through this? Dan, Rachel. You can resume real life. Well, I'm sure my wife will be. 22 copy days for gender items. Probably not, so they're going to be Um, I'll just sort it out with.